So, yeah, they need to snap out of it. You, you felt, having got the two wins, the back-to-back -back victories at the King Power, that maybe they were over it. But seeing Tuesday, there's definitely some way to go to recapture that early season form. And surely that will give hope to Plymouth Argyle as well, because Leicester have kept only one clean sheet in their last nine and only mm. three clean sheets in their last 16. And Argyle need to win. They need to pick up points from somewhere um, and I, I I look back particularly to a game that I covered here for TalkSport back in mid-February where Argyle were leading Coventry 2-1 with the last seconds in about the 95th 96th minute and Coventry got an equaliser it was a poor equaliser from Plymouth's point of view that was two points dropped those two points could be crucial it might be a good time to play Leicester City tonight. Plymouth sacked Ian Foster on April the 1st. That was after one win in 11 games. Interim boss Neil Dusnip since then, helping them to four points in the last two games. They rescued a point late on against Queen's Park Rangers in midweek after their win over the Rotherham. It's a step up tonight, of course, uh, Sam, in terms of the opposition. But as I mentioned, probably a good time for the two sides to meet. Yeah, I think, you know... <sighs> Argyle have definitely been been boosted by unfortunately changing managers at the tail end of the season there was a real toxicity around the place I, I believe and you could see that in abundance when they went to, to Rotherham that that had just evaporated you know just having a couple of new voices on the training ground going back to the old basically what had got them the success reintroducing Dan Scar, Callum Wright two players who have been ostracised really under Ian Foster so I think you know, if you, you consider this is a, a group that's had great success in League One, played for a pretty happy-go-lucky manager in Steven Schumacher, those two players that I just mentioned were a big part of that, that team and, and that squad, um, that can have an effect. And yeah. I, I think it had, it had done over the course of Ian Foster's tenure. So to just see those players reintroduced, to go back to that shape, the kind of 3-4-3 three, three that we're anticipating seeing tonight. Mumba back in his natural position. I know that Edwards isn't starting tonight, but he's been back at it at right wing back. I think that the, um, the, the pair in charge now, Juice Nip, um, uh, and Keith uh, Nanskerville yeah, yeah his name escapes me <laughs> Th those two I think have just you know kind of tapped into what's got them great success down here at Home Park and I felt it was so important that they backed up that result against QPR I didn't think QPR would come down here and win they weren't particularly good by all accounts Plymouth Argyle but they got a point so I mm. think that feel good factor should still be with the supporters it was really evident to me when I was here early part of the season it's a fantastic place to play football to watch football here they really get behind the side and they're going to need them tonight in a, in a game against as you say better opposition absolutely we're hoping for a great atmosphere I'm sure the Plymouth Argyle players and management are as well big night for Leicester City as they look to respond to defeat against Millwall in midweek you'll hear it full live and exclusive on TalkSport 2 from 8pm plenty more in the build up until kickoff. we'll be discussing at Plymouth and Leicester in much more detail but you're listening to the EFL Championship on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's automate delivery on the McDonald's app you'll get tasty rewards points it's 18 plus and terms and conditions apply EFL Live on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's how's this for a tasty lineup? a McCrispy and a strawberry milkshake automate delivery now on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points delivered too 18 plus rewards account required participating restaurants subject to availability delivery fees and terms apply I guess I'm aware of this pretty huge civil war going on all across America. It's the movie event of the year, says Playlist. A thrilling, heart-pounding epic, says IGN. Every instinct in me says this is death. Five Star, says The Telegraph and Den of Geek. A must-see, says Cinema Blend. Go, go, go! We can't wait, says GQ. Are you American? What kind of American are you? Civil War, in cinemas everywhere now. Experience it in IMAX. It's the big one. The world-famous Grand National. And at William Hill, we're ready with a great offer for all new and existing customers. Get a £1 free bet on the Grand National. That's right, a £1 free bet on the Grand National with William Hill. We're Grand National ready. Are you? Option required, valid April 1st to April 13th. One free bet per customer. Online and in shop for plus customers. Player restrictions and TNCs apply. 18 plus begambleaware.org. Let me go straight to the point. When you're laying a patio or driveway, you need Seeker Fast Fix. It's ready mixed, easy to use and quick to apply. Plus it comes in five colours and you can use it in any weather. Transform your next project with confidence. Transform it with Seeker Fast Fix. 
<sighs> and you'll finish a quality job in no time at all. Seeker Stockist now at seeker.co.uk slash landscaping. Not everything in golf makes sense, but buying pre-owned clubs does. We're Golf Bin, an official partner of the PGA that helped millions of golfers over the last 25 years find quality and affordable clubs to improve their game. So while you may not always trust your swing, you can trust our clubs. Golf is difficult. Buying great value pre-owned clubs isn't. This week, save even more with 15% off thousands of drivers at golfbidder.co.uk, the home of pre-owned clubs. The Masters, teeing off on now. Now he's absolutely launched that. Oh, now. Woods is in the woods. Now that's just magic. No, that's a drive. Oh, now he's just pulled that shot. Oh, now is this the putt that wins him the green jacket? No, there it is. Stream the Masters and all of Sky Sports without a contract. Head to nowtv.com. Sky Sports content streamed via internet. 18 plus. Full terms apply. Happy birthday to you. Okay, Nathan, you're next. Happy birthday to you. Uh, Mum, my birthday's not till next month. Like getting your money's worth? Grab a McDonald's Save a Meal Deal. That's a cheeseburger or mayo chicken, medium fries and drink for just $3.99. Also available via Just Eat until the 7th of May. Delivery price uplift and fees apply. Price may vary. The Women's Football Show with Leanne Sanderson. On Talk Sport 2. Every Monday night, I'll bring you unbiased analysis of the entire women's game. The left foot is delivery comes in. It's fantastic. It's gone into the back of the net. World beating, big match conversation. And big name interviews. Every week. I think you feel like you've got a lot of time and then suddenly you're just in it. It's the only dedicated women's football show on UK radio. That injury seems years ago now. The Women's Football Show with Leanne Sanderson. Monday night from 7 on Talk Sport 2, the home of women's football. EFL Live on Talk Sport 2. Plymouth Argyle take to their home park pitch tonight with really nothing to lose and everything to gain. Two points above the relegation zone and with the leaders Leicester in town, they'll be in the familiar underdogs role that has served the club so well historically. They'll be hoping to cause a massive upset. Kickoff coming at 8pm here on Talk Sport 2. Well, after the sacking of Ian Foster, it has been an intense couple of weeks for director of football and now caretaker manager of Plymouth, Neil Dewsnip. Four points from his first two games in charge. He's hoping to keep that momentum going tonight. I think sensibly. Two, two games is not, not yeah. uh, a, a lot of criteria to go off. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we, if we can keep building, uh, not losing, winning, somewhere in there as well over the next four games, then we'll be delighted. Let's head back to Home Park then. Uh, Chris Errington, reporter for Plymouth Live, is alongside John Roder. Good evening, Chris. Good evening, Hugh. How are you? I'm okay. How are you feeling? You must be in a much more positive mood about Plymouth after the past two games, surely? Yes, I mean, four points from, from the last two games. Uh, I think it was four from the previous nine. So um, it has been an improvement, a much needed improvement as well, because Argyle have been dragged perilously close to, to the relegation positions. As we all know, just five points covering the team's 16th to 23. So competitive is the fight to stay up. And uh, Argyle have given themselves hope now, uh, but uh, a really tough game for them against Leicester City here tonight. Were there really noticeable changes made by Neil Dewsnip in the past two games on the on the pitch, maybe personnel, tactics, or just general approach? I think there's just been a, a bit of a change in mood off the pitch. Um, mm. It was difficult uh, under Ian Foster. It's not solely his fault. Um, he came in in, in January uh, in the midst of the transfer window, in the midst of a, a lot of games, and he was following a very successful manager in Stephen Schumacher. And uh, I think it was it was always going to be hard for him, but it, they just got on a roll of results where they couldn't seem to get themselves out of the downward spiral. And um, yeah, it's never ideal when you make a, a change of manager with six games in a season to go but uh, I don't think you'd find many Argyle fans that didn't think it was the right time to to make a change they've um, they, they could have gone several ways but they went with Neil Dewsnip and Kevin Nanskeville who had the uh, temporary charge of the team for four games over Christmas after Stephen Schumacher left they went for the continuity approach and uh, they know the players the players know them and um, 
they've probably tried to revert a little bit back to playing the, the way they did when Steven Schumacher was the manager although you know confidence levels have taken a hit after the poor run of results so they're perhaps not quite playing with the freedom that we saw from them in the first three or four months of the campaign you, you mentioned that um, Kevin Nanskeville and, and Neil Dewsnip have changed things in terms of the mood off the pitch just for those that haven't spoken to them much I'm one of them you know what kind of people are they around the football club how have they managed to change the mood so quickly well Kevin Nanskill is known as Mr Argyle down here he's mm. been um, at the club on and off for oh, I'd say about 25 years he was a player originally he was a non-league player who Argyle signed um, when they were in the bottom division and he had a short time at Argyle but it was his club that he supported as a boy and then he returned later on to be a coach he's coached in the academy he's coached the reserves he's been a caretaker manager in his own right a couple of times and now he's working alongside um, Neil Dusnip so he is your traditional coach mm. has no interest in being a football uh, football manager he loves being on the training ground with the players and I think he's got that relationship that you know a, a long-term coach somebody like a Ray Lewington or people like that that just seem mm. to get on really well with their players Neil Dusnip is um, an FA man he, he coached the England um, age group teams he came up through the ranks through there he was also at the Everton Academy for a long time uh, he was there when Rain Rooney came through for example and Stephen Schumacher who was uh, in the uh, academy ranks as well so there are their two backgrounds and Neil's been the director of football for, for four years when, uh, when Ryan Lowe was the manager Neil came down here and um, he's the director of football so I mean he's not just doing the, the team at the moment but he was telling us the other day you know planning for pre-season games uh, planning for uh, the transfer window in the summer so he must be particularly busy at the yeah, moment yeah particularly as you don't know what division you're going to be in yes, next absolutely. season um, it, it's good that those people are at the football club and are having that impact and of course it is a continuity they're not people that have just been brought in off the back of the sacking of Ian Foster but when you look back at his appointment you know hindsight is a wonderful thing I know how big of an error do you think that was if you think it was an error at all and why do you think it didn't work out for him yeah I, I think you've got to call it an error um, I, I spoke to the chairman and owner Simon Hallett and, and yeah he agreed it was it was the wrong decision um, but as he rightly said you know when you're dealing with um, something like football where it's so difficult to predict anything is it mm. isn't it there's no such thing as a sure fire appointment they, uh, they they carried out the process that they did when they appointed Ryan Lowe and then Stephen Schumacher and you know you look at the record of those two guys um, while they were at Argyle um, and then the, the success certainly that Ryan has gone on to have uh, at Preston in the championship they were they were brilliant appointments when they brought Ian Foster in it felt a little bit more the same sort of thing you know somebody who was um, you know young and, and up and coming and, and getting a break in management uh, and, and it was it was a strange one you know after after his first few games he was even nominated for the championship manager of the month of January um, so initially it all felt as though everything was going well um, and as I just touched on earlier it sometimes in football you, you, you get a run of a couple of poor results they did have some really tough games in February they played Leeds West Brom Ipswich Coventry um, they came unstuck in in those games and when confidence dips in football it does seem to make a massive difference uh, you know Sam Parkins just alongside us here and uh, I'm sure he could uh, vouch for that that uh, it's amazing you know just a few bad results go against you and um, yeah. it makes a it makes a big difference and happened far too often in Sam's career really when you think about <laughs> it didn't it yeah <laughs> Well, he played for Exeter, so I mean, he, he should have been used to being, uh, being beaten in quite a few games, says the Argyle reporter. <laughs> um, the CEO, Andrew Parkinson, he has been talking about the multiple names he says that have, have you know, declared their interest in taking over um, in the full-time manager's role. What kind of manager do you expect to come to the club? And does that depend entirely on where the club is playing next season? Uh, answering your second question I mean the, the, the type of candidate I would have thought would be impacted by which division they're in I would have thought Argyle are much more likely to get um, certain candidates if they're in the championship that, that people that wouldn't be interested in, in in managing them in the league one so I think the division they're in will will definitely make an impact in in what they're looking for I would imagine that um, after the experience of Ian Foster you look at what football clubs tend to do they 
it's, it's unusual for them to just repeat the same sort of approach that they've adopted before. Um, so I would expect somebody more experienced. I'm not talking about somebody, you know, towards the end of their managerial career, but somebody perhaps with a bit more experience of EFL football than, um, than, than Ian Foster had, although he's very well qualified, but uh, perhaps more international level than at the EFL. And I mean, th this is a football club that, I, you know, I've, I've had the pleasure of covering for, for 27 seasons, Hugh, and uh, it's, it's, it's a unique club, I think, because we're out in, in, in so far away from everywhere. Um, I do think it is a different type of club. You need a certain type of person to manage the club. But despite the results that Argyle have had recently, they've sold out every game this season, from day one to through to tonight, and they've got the whole City game last day of the season. So the 16,000 fans turning up every week, filling home park. They're a very passionate bunch. They get behind the team. I, I think that some really good candidates would look at this club and think, yeah, I want to be part of that. So um, I'm hopeful that whoever Argyle appoints, um, they'll, they'll be able to come in and take on a stably well-run club under Simon Hallett and Andrew Parkinson and hopefully in the championship next season and build on uh, and learn the lessons from this season. If it is League One, unfortunately, then I still think the club is well-placed to, um, to, to bounce back mm. and, and push forward. And finally, just looking ahead to tonight and the rest of the season, how confident are you in terms of both aims, getting a result against Leicester City and staying in the division? Well, if you offered me a point now, Hugh, I'll bite your hand off and uh, go home and not even bother playing the game. Um, <laughs> it's it's going to be tough. I mean, I don't think Leicester losing to Millwall on Tuesday's probably helped Argyle's cause because uh, uh, I would imagine that they will be fired up to to make amends for that. Um, I, I think I heard you saying in the in the preview that this is a bit of a game nothing to lose because no one's going to expect them realistically to, to get much of or anything out of tonight's game go out there play with a bit of freedom hopefully and, uh, and try and give a good account of themselves the games that really matter are the three that follow afterwards and uh, the next one after Leicester is a big one as all Argyle fans will know it's a way to Stoke City the first time that Argyle will have come up against Stephen Schumacher uh, that has got the potential to be a really really important game at the bottom of the table and so um We'll see what happens tonight, but um, that Stoke game is looming and uh, I think that will have a big impact on uh, whether Argyle stay in the Championship or in League One next season. Chris Errington of the Plymouth Live, thank you very much for being with us. Really enjoyed talking to you and best of luck for the team tonight as well. We'll be back talking Leicester City very shortly. You're listening to the EFL Championship on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's. Order McDelivery on the McDonald's app and you can get tasty reward points, 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the Premier League and the EFL. EFL Live on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's. Fancy a Filio fish in time for the final whistle? Order McDelivery now on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points delivered too. 18 plus. Rewards account required. Participate in restaurants. Subject to availability. Delivery fees and terms apply. Hello, Tom Skinner here. Literally to drill through the clutter with some fantastic birthday news from DeWalt. To celebrate an amazing 100 years of the cutting edge of power tools, DeWalt have launched their most compact 18-volt XR hammer drill ever. The limited edition. DCD100. It's certainly got bags of wallop. The new DeWalt DCD100. It's grey, it's compact, and it's got up to 68 newton metres of torque. In fact, the water's so excited about innovating for a century, they're giving away 100 birthday prizes, including power tools, and even this year, brand spanking new full range of wild track pickup. To enter, buy a DCD100 drill kit from any UK DeWalt retailer before the 12th of June and register online. Easy. The new limited edition DeWalt DCD100 hammer drill. Tough, rugged and one of a kind. Like me. <laughs> 18 plus, see DeWalt.co.uk for terms and conditions. Hi all. How are we doing? Afternoon. 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 Let's get this meeting. Meeting. Meeting started. Bye. Mom. Where's the, where's the tablet gone? When everyone's home, EE Work Mode prioritizes your broadband for working from home with faster speeds in more places than anyone else. So, yeah, 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 I've got you loud and clear. Clear as a bell. This is broadband made for working from home. Search EE Broadband, powered by BT. Work Mode with EE Smart Hub Plus to verify see ee.co.uk slash claims. Five minutes and you're done. You can do your own simple haircut in five minutes or less with innovative Beast Clipper from Skullshade. No more drama.
driving, waiting and paying every time you cut your hair. None of that. Skull Shaver products have over 100,000 five-star reviews worldwide and 30 days money-back guarantee. Five minutes and you're done. The Beast Clipper at skullshaver.co.uk can do it. Skull Shaver, the time saver. Are you guys aware of this pretty huge civil war going on all across America? It's the movie event of the year, says Playlist. A thrilling, heart-pounding epic, says IGN. Every instinct in me says this is death. Five Star, says The Telegraph and Den of Geek. A must-see, says Cinema Blend. Go, go, go! We can't wait, says GQ. Well, you're American. What kind of American are you? Civil War, in cinemas everywhere now. Experience it in IMAX. Kick off your Saturday with game day breakfast on TalkSport with goals. The free football pullout with the sun. Score! Lace up your boots for the nation's brightest sports breakfast with insider match day news, big game previews and exclusive interviews from Tony Cascarino and Natalie Sawyer. You better believe it! Get fully loaded for football with game day breakfast tomorrow morning from 6 on TalkSport with goals. The essential free football pullout with the sun every Saturday, Sunday and Monday. On DAB Plus, online, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. EFL Live on TalkSport 2. The nail-biting conclusion to the EFL season continues tonight with a fixture that could have big ramifications at both ends of the table. Leicester could go three points clear at the top with a win or Plymouth Argyle could leap five points clear of the relegation zone. Both would be a big step towards each team's end-of-season target. So an important game coming at home park. Let's remind ourselves of the lineups with John Roda. Anticipation building here at home park where Plymouth Argyle make Five changes from the team that drew 1-1 here with QPR on Tuesday night. Brendan Galloway and Gillian Plegazuelo coming into defence. Adam Forshaw and Mikel Miller into midfield. And Mustafa Bundu will start up front alongside Ryan Hardy and Morgan Whitaker. Those three quite a threat to the Leicester City defence. Three changes for Leicester from the team that de was defeated at Millwall on Tuesday. James Justin comes in at fullback. Isahaku Fatuu and Patson Daka leads the line, which means that Jamie Vardy is is on the bench uh, Jamie Vardy who hasn't actually played against Plymouth Argyle he's played against 70 different clubs and scored against 47 of them but he'll have to wait to take his chance this evening wouldn't bet against him taking it if he does come off the bench tonight we're going to discuss the leaders now in a little bit more detail we're joined uh, at home park by Jordan Blackwell the Leicester City correspondent for Leicestershire Live good evening Jordan good evening Firstly, let's talk about Leicester's form. Three wins in their last ten games. Are the doubts creeping back in? They've got a game in hand tonight. How big is it for Enzo Moresca's side? Well, I would certainly say that doubts are creeping into the fan base, I think, uh, because of everything that's, that's, that's going on with the club in terms of the, the financial uh, issues and the, uh, the, the potential for the point deductions, um, which, well, which we now know will be next season. Um, I think you know fans really know that it, it's about getting into the Premier League this season. Um, and yeah, the, the, the last few results has been so so good for Leicester over the sort of the first sort of three quarters of the season. Um, but since mid February, it's been a little bit of a struggle. They've not quite been taking chances. Um, and I think that's why there's perhaps not the doubts there within the squad, and certainly not with manager Enzo Moresco, because I think he just sees it as the team haven't taken the chances that they were doing in the first three quarters of the season, and that's the only difference between performances what do you make of the lineup then tonight three changes Abdul Fatawu's back in Patson Daka starts up front James Justin in the back line too all positive moves in your view well I would say James Justin coming in is a defensive move to to maybe keep uh, Morgan Whitaker quiet he's uh, probably a better one-on-one -on -one defender than Callum Doyle is uh, who has been at left back Callum Doyle probably better on the ball than, than James Justin but I think that's a, a defensive change to try and keep one of Plymouth's big threats quiet um, Dak is an interesting one I, I don't think it will be a decision that will have gone down particularly well with Leicester supporters um, I think it was always going to be the case that Vardy wouldn't start again I think it, he doesn't really start two games in a row particularly if they're, they're close together like it has been this week um, but Dak has not scored in eight games uh, he, he scored seven in ten when he first came into the team but he struggled a little bit 
in the past couple of months and missed a few big chances at, at, at including in the last minute on Tuesday night so I think that's a, that's an interesting one I think fans would probably have preferred to have seen Tom Cannon or Lecce Inacho um, Abdul Fatawu on the right I think was always going to come back in um, and he's a, a big big threat when he's uh, in form and he creates a lot of chances he's very dangerous uh, he's got that he's got the quick feet to trouble any any defence so um, yeah I think he'll be a key player tonight Jordan, I know Sam Parkin is alongside you. I, I'm going to want the views of both of you after we've heard from Enzo Maresca once again because Leicester's 250-mile trip to Plymouth tonight is their longest of the season. It's their 49th game. They, of course, played on Tuesday night. The manager not very happy with that decision. Have a listen. We played Tuesday night, arrive here at 3 o'clock in the morning. Today we need to travel. We have five hours back from Plymouth. But uh, the organization decided that and we are the only team played Tuesday night and Friday. In this moment with our competitors, the only one that we played two games away. But uh, I don't think people care too much about players, healthy players, because otherwise you cannot understand this kind of a decision. And as I said, we arrive here at 3 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday and they are human beings. And if someone is worried about healthy players, is not the correct thing to do. Well, Jordan, I know you're not a professional athlete, but you probably would have made these journeys this week. What has it been like? Uh, well, well, it is tiring. Uh, you know, it is towards the end of the season. Um, you know, I didn't get back from Millwall until a similar time that the, the Leicester squad did. Um, and yeah, I'm not playing 90 minutes uh, <laughs> in the middle of it, but it's, it's still tiring. So I can kind of understand where Moresca's coming from. Um, uh, you know, he, I, he, I think he was a little bit cute and he didn't mention that Ipswich I think actually have a shorter turnaround because they played Wednesday night and then they go Saturday uh, afternoon but uh, their two games are at home so it's perhaps more understandable but um, you know I think it's just the nature of the league I think everybody knows this is what the championship's like uh, you know I think every probably every month or so there will be a team that has two tough away games in the space of a week um, so yeah I think it's just the nature of it and I think I would say I don't think Maris can complain too much about tiredness in his team because I think there's seven outfield players that have started all of the past three games in a week and I think if he was really, really concerned um, about tiredness, he would perhaps rotate his team a little bit more. Sam, any sympathy? Hugh, do you know what I think the bigger issue is? Listening to some stuff on the way down today, I don't think he should be talking about tiredness. I've not heard Kieran McKenna talking about tiredness or Daniel Farker. I mean... If the, there is a realistic proposition that Leicester drop into the playoffs, psychologically, at this stage of the season, I think you need the dressing room highly motivated and, and focused and thinking that they can run miles and miles and miles. I, I, I don't know why he's brought that up during the week. I really don't. I obviously have sympathy that they've had to go to Millwall and, and down here tonight on a Friday. It's, it's far from ideal when you consider... Ipswich have got two games uh, at Portman Road but I find it slightly strange that he's you know talking about the players being fatigued and, and that's the reason for the for the loss of form I think there's there's other ingredients at play here including a lack of uh, ruthlessness in front of goal you've got to say Jordan missed chances turning into a huge problem for Leicester now Maresca trying to keep things calm he's stressing that performance levels are still very high but the fans are starting to get concerned and as you mentioned seeing Pats and Daka starting tonight wouldn't have settled their nerves much no I think it's uh, it, you, you probably remember the, the Leeds game uh, in mid, mid February which was obviously such a big game and Leicester played so well for 80 minutes of that but only scored one goal and missed a, a, a good deal of chances Steffi Mavadidi and, and Pats and Daka missed the two big one on ones and because the it, you know missed chances were the story of that game and it just feels like it snowballed and that it's Lots of players seem to have lost their, their form in front of goal. Jamie Vardy missed a few chances away at Bristol City on Good Friday. Uh, at the end of the Millwall game, there were a few chances that went begging as well. Um, and I think it's... Uh, yes, I think for, as, for a manager, you're going to say you're unfortunate, but, you know, I think when you're watching on, you say, well, is you know, are things like nerves creeping into play? Is that what's... You know, is that stopping the players from taking, the, taking their chances so clinically? The other thing to contend with at this point in time are some big stories off the field as well. I just wanted to ask you about 
you know, all right, just to remind everyone, the Premier League charging with Leicester with an alleged breach of the league's profit and sustainability rules. The EFL plating the club under a transfer embargo. Last week, the announcement of another season of big financial losses for the club. Really, I wanted to ask you about what you're looking into in terms of the future, really. If there's no promotion, let me just do worst case scenario. If there's no promotion and a possible points deduction, what does that mean for the future of Leicester City? Well, it's uh, it's quite quite bleak, I think, because there's going to have to be so many changes. Um, you know, they're already operating on a, a budget that isn't really sustainable within the within the EFL. Um, I mean, even if they do get promoted to avoid um, breaching uh, profit and sustainability rules for this season, they're going to have to sell players in June, whatever. Um, you know, before the the end of the financial year, at the end of June. So that they've got that to come to avoid maybe getting two years of, of sanctions. Um, it's uh, yeah, you know, there's going to be if they s- remain in the, the championship next season, they'll have to sell a lot of players. They'll have to reduce the wage budget considerably, um, and I think that kind of, you know, th- that's, it's going to be such a big adjustment that you would struggle to think that they, you know, they'll be in a position where they can fight for promotion next season. Um, you know, even if they are one of the bigger clubs in the division, I just think the, the amount of changes they will have to go through in the summer will make it really difficult for them. And finally, ahead of tonight, is it is it must win just in terms of getting the positive mood back? In terms of getting the mood back, yes, I would say so. I think the. It, I think they are in that rocky ground at the minute where they beat Norwich and they beat uh, Birmingham and it felt like everything was all right again but then it, that they're only one result away from a, a bad mood as was proven by the, the Millwall game so I do think they need a win obviously they don't need a win in terms of they will still it will still be in their hands if they do lose tonight because they've got that game in hand against Southampton in a couple of weeks but um, yeah I think uh, given the fixtures that they've got you know they've got West Brom at home to come as well um, but, you know they've got Blackburn on the last day and Blackburn might still be, you know, fighting for survival yeah. at that point. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on and really they could do with a win here. OK, Jordan Blackwell of Leicestershire Live. Appreciate you joining us on Talk Sport 2. Been a busy build-up. We've got much more coming your way, including kick-off, as you heard the players there, uh, going down the tunnel for their final preparations between Plymouth Argyle and Leicester City, live from Home Park. That's next on Talk Sport 2. Talk Sport 2, official broadcast partner of the English Football League. EFL Live on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's. Bring on the unbeatable strike partnership of McNuggets and Dip. Order McDelivery now on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points delivered too. 18 plus. Rewards account required. Participate in restaurants. Subject to availability. Delivery fees and terms apply. At Morrison's, get any four for £5 from over 30 frozen products. From bird's eye garden peas, potato waffles, Goodfellas pizzas, plus many more. That's more Easy Peasy Teas sorted. Morrison's to shop at Morrison's. Majority of stores and online subject to availability. Selected lines ends 14th of April. It's the big one. The world famous Grand National. And at William Hill, we're ready. With a great offer for all new and existing customers. Get a £1 free bet on the Grand National. That's right. A £1 free bet on the Grand National with William Hill. We're a Grand National ready. Are you? Option required, valid from April 1st to April 13th. One free bet per customer. Online and in shop for plus customers. Player restrictions and TNCs apply. 18 plus begambleaware.org. Not everything in golf makes sense, but buying pre owned clubs does. We're Golf Bidder, an official partner of the PGA that helped millions of golfers over the last 25 years find quality and affordable clubs to improve their game. So while you may not always trust your swing, you can trust our clubs. Golf is difficult. Buying great value pre-owned clubs isn't. This week, save even more with 15% off thousands of drivers at golfbidder.co.uk, the home of pre-owned clubs. Hi all. How are we doing? Afternoon. 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 Let's get this meeting. Meeting. Meeting started. Hi. Come on. Where's the tablet gone? When everyone's home, EE Work Mode prioritizes your broadband for working from home with faster speeds in more places than anyone else. So, yeah, 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 I've got you loud and clear. Clear as a bell. This is broadband made for working from home. Search EE Broadband, powered by BT. Work Mode with EE Smart Hub Plus. To verify, see ee.co.uk slash claims. Uno is now available in McDonald's Happy Meal. So let's see who can shout Uno first. 
Bring it on. Mm, yes. Yes. Ooh. No! A wild card! <laughs> right. Ah, yes. Back in the game. Yes. Ooh. No! I draw one card. Ah. Uno. <laughs> Better luck next time. Have fun with your Uno cards. Does that one count? Nope. Oh. Some fun, some food. It's all inside this Happy Meal. Until 7th of May from 11am. Includes one pre-selected book or toy. Uno range comprises toys only. While stocks last. The Monday Club on Talk Sport 2. A broadcasting juggernaut of sport. They were in big, big trouble at half time. Professional analysis. He always gets away these tactical fouls. Oh, he's the master of the dark arts. And refreshingly frank opinion after all the action. I don't know if they're as open as they were and as aggressive as they were. The Monday Club. The sharpest minds in the business. Elite level mentality. Monday afternoon from 5. On Talk Sport 2. EFL Live on TalkSport 2. Tonight, Leicester City shoot for the sky in the championship as they try to go three points clear at the top of the table in this incredibly tight uh, title race. You can't predict anything right now and after defeat to lowly Millwall in midweek, will Plymouth Argyle be the latest club threatened with relegation to shock the leaders in what could be a huge boost to their own survival chances. It finished 4-0 to Leicester at the King Power in December, so the odds would have to be massively upset tonight. Let's get the latest with William Hill. In the zone on TalkSport 2 with official betting partner William Hill. Get epic value all season with William Hill. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. Lee Phelps of William Hill joins us. This must have been a, a, a tricky one for you guys to call. The table, the points, the quality that Leicester have shown, but the form table isn't great. Up against a team fighting for survival, where at this point in the season, just about anything can happen. Yeah, true. Yeah, but having said all that, Leicester are still two to five, very short, especially mm. in the championship, as you've just said there. Mm. And I've been on Talksport too many times this season, saying I don't like backing any team, whether it's <laughs> Leicester in their pomp at odds on, but they are a deserved price because you look at Plymouth, and I know they got the draw, but they, you know, it kind of helped them. But look at the goal scoring record. That draw, that goal in that 1-1 draw was the first goal they'd had at Home Park since Valentine's Day. And that was an own goal. So technically, no one has scored a goal for Plymouth at the home stadium uh, since Valentine's Day. And it doesn't bode well. Leicester can score goals. We know they've been stumbling a little bit recently. Now, look, I can't sit here and put up Leicester at 2-5. to five. There's got to be another way in. Plymouth are 6-1, to one, by the way. The draw is 18-5. to five. Normally, I'd then look at the match result on both teams to score. Finding it hard to put Plymouth up to score a goal against Leicester. Um, you know, it would give you 17-10 to 10 for Leicester and both teams to score. So I'm probably going to mm-hmm. look at goal scoring. I do, think, I do think Leicester will win the game. And I think they could win it comfortably as well. There's, a, there's an epic odds around a goal being scored in the first half that's been boosted from 4-1 to one on to even money. It's a maximum bet of ten pounds, and all the season seeds are on the on the app and uh, on uh, on WilliamHill.com. But look, I think you know that there's goal scorers all over this Leicester team, as we well know. I'm just looking at some of the prices for any time goals. You've got Pats and Dacker at five to four to score at any time. He's four to one to score first. Um, also, Sebi Mavadidi, I mean, he scored two in that 4 0 win that you were just talking mm. about. Might be worth a look. 7 to 5 to score any time, 24 to 5 to score first. I think they win, and I think they could win comfortably in the end. I think it could be maybe a 2 0 or a 3 0. In fact, there's a Leicester to win 3 0 or 3 1, was 4 to 1, now 5 to 1. I don't mind that one at all, mm. but for me, it's a Leicester win. They have that game in hand over Ipswich and Leeds. This takes them clear top as the weekend gets properly underway tomorrow. Might go for the 17-10. to 10. I think maybe Plymouth have got a goal in them tonight and uh, both teams to score with Leicester to win. Good odds there. Lee, let me ask you. I've been asking everyone for a tip for the National. Help me out, brother, please. Who should I be putting my money on? <laughs> oh, I mean, it depends how you pick them, doesn't it? It's a tricky <laughs> one. I mean, there's. I, I've been hearing a lot today. I've, I'm at Aintree all three days this, this week and I've been hearing an awful lot about a horse called Limerick Lace. Okay. Now, been backed in, been continually backed in. It's now 10 to 1. Um, so it could be like single figure odds by tomorrow. But everywhere I look, Gavin Cromwell is an ambassador for William Hill um, and, and, you know, trains this horse. Mm. And I just keep seeing a lot of chat. I am Maximus and Coat Rambler have been vying for favouritism all day. Mm. But Rick Lace just keeps getting shorter and shorter and shorter. 10 to 1 is about as, far, as short as you want it to go, I would suggest. Mm. A couple of others that I like, Vanillier, another great Gavin Cromwell horse at 12 to 1. Um, and 
I've also been looking at Coco Beach. Gordon Elliott's kind of had a, a good couple of days at Aintree. 22 to 1 for Coco Beach. Another one that's been backed in was 33 to 1. But um, I've given you a few there. Yeah. I'm going to stick with Lim- Limerick Lace. All right, brilliant. Lee, I knew, I knew Lee Phelps would come through. Finally, I've got something to back for tomorrow. So I appreciate it. Of course, by the way, the Grand National live on Talk Sport tomorrow. But those were the latest starts with William Hill. Please gamble responsibly. It's 18 plus. Uh, and make sure you check out BeGambleAware.org. In the zone on TalkSport 2 with official betting partner William Hill, giving you the tools for positive play. Take time to think and know your limits. 18 plus, BeGambleAware.org. It's going to be a great weekend at Aintree. Going to be a great weekend at Home Park, hopefully for the home side tonight. But one man out to stop Plymouth Argyle will be Leicester City defender Ricardo Pereira. He's been speaking to TalkSport after the club's surprise defeat in midweek to Millwall. He caught up with Ian Abrahams. A trip to Plymouth. Um, You're playing first, but you're playing Friday after playing Tuesday. In terms of that, is it an advantage or a disadvantage? Uh, hard to say. I think it depends of um, the re- after the game, uh, but uh, it is what it is, and we need to uh, to be ready Friday night and to go again and win. We've everyone's thought less we get promoted and, and win the championship from the whole season. In that respect, with five games to go, that is still the case. Are the players now thinking right? A very very short sprint to the end of the season, and we can achieve our goal. Yeah, uh, like you said, we still can uh, achieve our goal. It's all on our ends. Uh, we just need to, to keep going, believing, and uh, now recover for the next game and keep going. Finally, you mentioned believing a couple of times. Has the, the team ever not believed that they weren't going to get promoted this season? Because, as I say, it was it's basically a, cha- a Premier League team in the Championship. No, we have to believe in ourselves. Uh, we knew that even with the adventures we have in some parts of the season, that could change because uh, you know how football is and uh, we never stop believing even sometimes there's a lot of noise outside but we need to focus on us, focus and believe in our on the work we do since the beginning of the season and uh, keep working and keep believing like I said. Ricardo Pereira of Leicester City there speaking to Ian Abrahams. Listen, Sam Parkin and John Rodo are at home park. Sam, Enzo Maresca saying he doesn't want to dwell on the defeat in midweek. Performance levels are still high. You heard Ricardo Pereira there talking about belief. Well, how many times can Maresca pick up his team after a poor result and these players keep believing? That's the test for them tonight. And I think Keen and Juice, we all spoke about a bit of a lack of confidence even after those two home victories. So it's definitely affected them. Uh, Tuesday night won't have helped uh, in any shape or form. So they've got to raise themselves. So they will hope with the... The introduction of Fatou in particular, Justin for that recovery pace that Jordan spoke to you about a few moments ago. And Dakar, can he rediscover, rediscover what he was doing early part of the season? We know there's quality players there and I think that I felt when they won those two home games, having Indeedy back, having Ricardo Pereira available, Vestergaard as well probably, the spine of that team, you know, invariably throughout the season, one of those has probably been missing for, for periods. Everyone's fit now, so the excuses have got to stop. They've got to find that balance and they've got to go into these five remaining games knowing that it's in their hands. That Southampton game is a tricky one, the one in hand, but they can still achieve the... Um, uh, everything that they wanted to at the, the outset of the season. You mentioned Keenan in Dewsbury Hall. You know, he, he was talking a couple of weeks ago about the group wanting to avoid the tag of, of bottlers in this title race. If you were in that changing room right now, do you think any of the outside noise would be getting in? Clearly, he at least has heard some of it. Yeah, possibly it has, and there's players that, that bear the scars of missing out on Champions League and, and, and faltering on occasions, probably while they've been at the club, but it's a new group of players, it's a new manager. I think, you know, me personally, I've really enjoyed watching them this season. I know the football's been a little bit stale latterly, and um, they face some criticism from the supporters or the the, the manager, the coaches face some, some criticism, but in the main, I've enjoyed watching them. I think it's a talented group, and I still believe they've they've got it in their armory to get it done. They need to get him involved more tonight Tewsbury Hall was a bit of a passenger on Tuesday we've not said that too readily this season the, the, the shape was a little bit altered I'm really interested to see how they they set up today Pereira's role is always so 
uh, varying from, from game to game. He was really high playing kind of alongside Dewsbury Hall and indeed and it left them a little bit exposed. It's actually where Ryan Longman's goal came from. So fascinating to see which way they set up tonight. John, when we look at Plymouth trying to cause a shot tonight, they'll be reminding everyone that Leicester haven't won at home park in their last 10 visits in the league, stretching back to 1955. If they're going to cause that shot tonight, how do you think they'll do it? I think the answer to that, most people will give you that history is bunk when it comes to uh, statistics like this. It all matters about what happens tonight. Let's face it, they've been in different divisions for a very long time. Leicester relegated from the Premier League last season. Plymouth promoted from League One as champions. They were two divisions apart last season. They could be two divisions apart next season. OK, John, appreciate it. It's going to be a very big night. The two teams are coming out. Remember, Plymouth two points above the drop zone. Sam, if they are going to stay up very quickly, they'll need to get the best out of their biggest goal threats. Ryan Hardy, no goals in eight. Morgan, Morgan Whitaker, two goals in his last 11. Is that more a sign of the form that the team were in predominantly under Ian Foster or something bigger? Yeah, I, I think they've probably been, um, obviously, a little bit impacted by playing the slightly conservative style of football under Ian Foster. It's not been clearly as free-scoring, as attack, open-minded football that they had under Stephen Schumacher and previously Ryan Lowe. So I think I think that's been a little bit of a, a factor. Quite wide as well, those uh, those two, or Whitaker in particular. Sorry, Hardy obviously is the central one. So I'd, I'd be probably anticipating Whitaker playing a little bit more between the lines tonight and Bundu and getting closer to Ryan Hardy, who's looked a little isolated in the recent outings. Prediction for this first half, Sam, will Leicester go at them? Um, I think so, but like I said, I think Argyle's lineups are really attacking one. So I think I think this is. I don't like it. Uh, you know, nothing to lose night for, for Plymouth Argyle. A free hit, if you will. There's more on it than that because there's only four games remaining. So they have to have an eye on survival as well, clearly. But I think they can have a bit of a go tonight, knowing that this is arguably the best team in the division. Well, Home Park in great voice once again. All set to see if one of the championship's front runners will drop points again and put another spanner in the works during this crazy season where anything can happen and we expect anything to happen live in exclusive championship action as Leicester City travel to Plymouth Argyle in the company of the former Swindon and Ipswich forward Sam Barkin and the one and only John Roder Thank you Hugh The Jenner song has been sung with relish and with passion if you don't know what a Jenner is basically it's somebody from uh, Plymouth uh, I'm an adopted Devonian I think my granddad, granddad, granddad would have had to be born here to be a proper Devonian. What a game we have in prospect. Neil Tuesnick said in his programme notes that he wanted the Plymouth Argyle supporters to be right behind their team tonight in these huge four matches that they have left. And let's face it, Sam, what an atmosphere. Yeah, brilliant. I think, um, you know, Chris speaking earlier, spoke about the way that the, um, the the club feel has won again. Obviously, after a difficult couple of months, they, they feel unified. I think the Rotherham win away from home was a huge boost backed up with that point against QPR now obviously a much tougher test but at last this place is jumping again so it is top of the table Leicester City against Plymouth Argyle in 20th both teams desperate for points for very different reasons it has been a lovely sunny day in Devon today daylight disappearing the floodlights are on and we are underway with Leicester City kicking off from right to left as we look out from the main stand here at home park and Leicester tonight in their change colors of a very light orange with white shorts and light orange socks Plymouth Argyle in there all green with gold trimming kicking from left to right and an early ball for Plegosuelo and he loses it on the left hand side it's immediately picked up by Patson Decker who made an advance towards the goal line couldn't get the ball across and it's out for an Argyle goal kick a little bit sloppy to begin Leicester actually there was a bit of a stray pass from Vestergaard I think it was nearly intercepted by an Argyle forward and equally lapsed start of the game from Pegasuelo who has played quite a lot of football this year I looked him up pre-match because I thought he hadn't featured too readily but he's only been out the side for four or so weeks so he shouldn't be too rusty new era at Plymouth Argyle after the departure of Ian Foster it was 
a miserable time for Argyle in his spell in charge picked up in midfield by Harry Winks for Leicester Justin on this left hand side forward to Dewsbury Hall who crosses the halfway line advances now towards the penalty area puts it into the middle there were two waiting but there were also a host of defenders and Plymouth are able to clear it away but Leicester will build again Yannick Vestergaard down the left hand side past one challenge from Morgan Whittaker and it's played out now to this left hand side of Mappadini Justin and all the way back to Matt Hermanson the Leicester goalkeeper who's clad in a pink shirt tonight with purple shorts and pink socks the colour combination on the Leicester goalkeeper pretty clashing it has to be said it's a really fast pace at the moment and Argyle have it inside their own half with Adam Randall the Plymouth born midfielder the Plimpton Pierlo as he's known around here Plimpton being a place not far from Plymouth Plegozuela, right hand side of the defence knocked out now to Bally Mumba Mumba playing on the right for Argyle trying to get away from his opposite number James Justin and he's done so but it really is a very very fast pace early on in proceedings yeah that's interesting Mumba on the, the right he was speaking after that Rotherham victory saying how at home he felt at left wing back and obviously played the majority of his football under Stephen Schumacher in that role so news to it immediately put him back there but tonight Mikel Miller comes in on the far side and like I said two goal threats from wing back tonight for our goal this is not a conservative lineup by any stretch and, and the game has, has started pretty openly Cooper in the Plymouth goal lays it out to his left hand side Galloway chips it forward towards the halfway line towards Mustafa Bundu but Leicester are there but they can't keep hold of it and it's played forward to Ryan Hardy midway inside the Leicester half central position Argyle work it out to this near side to Bally Mumba on the right wing cuts in field towards the penalty area tried to just lay it forward but uh, couldn't find Hardy with that ball and away will come Mapadivi for Leicester City down this left hand side can't quite be controlled there by Dewsbury Hall long ball high into the Plymouth half and Plymouth will gather again with Adam Forshaw Forshaw whose experience will be vital for Plymouth Argyle in their last few matches of this championship season remember they were promoted as League One champions last season they have Stoke and Millwall away and Hull at home on the final weekend of the season as for Leicester City home to West Brom home to Southampton in their game in hand and then away to Preston North End and at home to Blackburn on the final day of the season it is going to be a fascinating finale to the EFL Championship and you can follow it all with us here on TalkSport it's Plymouth Argyle nil, Leicester City nil on TalkSport 2 live and exclusive national radio commentary as Argyle work it down the left hand side but it's too long and it's out for a goal kick here's Sam Parkin yeah, it was a nice idea Adam Randell in the central midfield position there just tried to feed it down the left for Galloway who was overlapping left sided centre half and nice spell of possession from Argyle there kept it for a couple of minutes moved Leicester around and yeah bright start from the home side Bally Mumba cuts infield from the right hand side works it infield to Randall and Argyle trying to keep possession themselves I think it's fairly safe to say that most people predicted Leicester to have the lion's share of possession tonight and Leicester have picked it up on that far side with Fatawu Fatawu waits for support finds it from Ndidi on the halfway line and Wilfred Ndidi is fouled a couple of paces inside the Leicester half away over on the right hand side Leicester kicking from right to left in this opening half at home park under the lights Justin left hand side exchanges passes with Dewsbury Hall Dewsbury Hall works it forward now and Didi bit of space on the far side Fatamu drives it across and it's pushed away by Cooper and away for a throw in on the far side first real opportunity of the night yeah maybe just Mikel Miller just getting a little bit drawn towards the ball just coming in field there and it opened up beautifully on the right hand side and just was unable to, to drag his right foot around the ball there 
for Tawu. It's a great opportunity for, for Leicester. Keenan Dewsbury will hardly had that opportunity on Tuesday to get on the ball with space in front of him to drive into. Played too high the other night and was unable to kind of find those pockets of space. There he did it beautifully. Now those two changes up front, Daka and Fatawu coming in. You were at Millwall on Tuesday and those are changes you would have made. Absolutely. In, in the case of, of Fatawu, I think we've, we've already seen, you know, going forward he's incredibly sharp. It gives you that balance on the opposite flank you've got Mavadidi, boxer trips, really sharp, had a phenomenally good season for him, playing regularly in, in England for the for the first time. So yeah, they're real threatening and, and just on the shape as well. This is what we've seen from Leicester predominantly throughout the season. Ricardo stepping into midfield, making it a two kind of man anchor with Harry Winks, and then indeed he back on his natural right side. Yeah, advanced midfield and Keenan Drewsby Hall on the left. They were opposite sides at Millwall and it, it was obviously a plan that Maresca had, I think, to, to counteract what Millwall were doing, maybe in a defensive sense, and it just didn't work. They didn't create enough chances and obviously Millwall were able to open them up for the, the goal that won the game. Ball rolled out by Hermanson towards Winks. Winks lays it forward, it's picked up inside the centre circle, inside his own half by Dewsbury Hall, but he can't keep possession. He will now win it back, shouts for handball from the Plymouth Argyle supporters, not heeded by the referee. Leicester will work it forward, but it's been tidied up at the back by Plegozuelo, and Cooper will clear long, right-footed, into the Leicester half, where it's gathered by Wout Fars. Fars to his left, to Justin. Leicester with those very pale orange shirts and dark numbers on the back. Play it all the way back to Hermansen. Vestergaard on the left-hand side, inside his own half. Over the halfway line now to find Dewsbury Hall, who's running at the Plymouth defence. Keenan Dewsbury Hall works it forward. Flag goes up, won't count. Patson Dacker put it in with his right foot, curling it past Michael Cooper, but he knew he was offside, and the flag was up promptly on the far side. Yeah, immediately with Leicester trying to really overload the, the middle of the pitch, trying to get extra bodies in there, for sure. Struggling with Dewsbury Hall, opening few minutes of this game. Brilliant turn from him, and marginal offside. Cleared away long by Hermanson, and it'll be gathered on the far side by Brendan Galloway. Infield to Dan Scar, who's starting for the third match in a row in the championship, having been recalled by the team of Neil Dewstep and Kevin Natskevelt, the joint managers, although interestingly they're not actually referred to as interim managers at all. They've still got their old titles, which is director of football and first team coach. But they are providing that little element of continuity as Chris Errington from Plymouth Live was saying earlier Kevin Nanskival in particular Mr Argyle been here so many years Plymouth Argyle nil Leicester City nil on Talk Sport 2 in the AFL Championship and forward comes Harry Winks it's a long run almost up to the edge of the Argyle penalty area on the left hand side Dewsbury Hall works it in field to Justin chance maybe for a shot here from Ricardo he goes for the one two and Ricardo right footed Cooper with the save diving to his left to push it away danger not yet over though Leicester still coming forward on the right hand side chipped across header back across goal comes in from Mavadivi and Plymouth beat it away it's a long clearance from Plegozuelo but Leicester City looking really dangerous yeah too easy to evade the, the forwards pressure at one end brilliant play from, from Leicester lovely intricate stuff Harry Winks with the driving run could Ricardo just go across the goalkeeper there it was brilliant approach play from Daka played a perfectly weighted through ball I think Ricardo needs to strike that across Cooper and in the end, a really intelligent, excellent header from Mavadidi at the far post. Kept it alive, but Argyle able to scramble clear. Really anxious moments for the home supporters here. Leicester aboard around about 2,000. Down from the Midlands to cheer on the Foxes this evening. They're away to our right. And they have been very much in favour of what they've seen so far from their team. Ball played forward, Plegazuelo works it back to the goalkeeper and Cooper will clear it away. Justin with the header down on the left-hand side. Picked up here by Harry Winks inside the centre circle. Out to Fars. Leicester with good intricate passing and they work it down the right-hand side to Fatawu. Fatawu trying to get away from Miller. Miller though, jinking, turning and you can hear the applause from the Plymouth faithful there for Mikael Miller 
So it's straight out of play though from Galloway for a Leicester throw midway inside the Argyle half on the far side. Leicester's right. Darkness really beginning to descend now here in Plymouth. As Leicester work it across to the left hand side. Justin now out to the left wing to Mafadidi. Mafadidi who scored twice against Plymouth in the 4 0 win at the KP back in December. Mafadidi works it across. Fatawu, the little ball infield, and Didi trying to get away from Galloway, can't do so. Ricardo chips it into the penalty area, and it's turned back by his own goalkeeper, by Bali Mumba to Cooper. But Leicester certainly on top at the moment, Sam Parkin. Yeah, two most important players, I think, Mumba, Mikel Miller, John. I think that Neil Dewsnip has to encourage Morgan Whitaker and Bundu to come narrow, uh, narrow and make that box midfield and allow the ball to go James wide. Justin and Didi, right hand side, just outside the penalty area. It's forced backwards though. And has to play it now to Pereira. Pereira to his left to Winks. Harry Winks, 35 yards out from goal, central position. Dewsbury Hall, wanting Mavadidi to make a run on this left hand side. He's not done so though. Justin, back to Mavadidi. Leicester almost toying with Plymouth at the moment Fars will work it out presumably to the far side that's where he's headed and indeed that's where the ball is headed Fatawu trying to lay it back into the path of Fars but Fars can't find a way through and it's out for a goal kick Plymouth Argyle nil Leicester City nil on Talk Sport 2 yeah, Leicester want to play through teams they want to get into Dewsbury Hall want to get him turned in an ideal world get it into the centre forward Plymouth Argyle need to be really compact in the middle of the pitch and that's why Bundu, Whitaker, they need to narrow off, make that box midfield which was so synonymous under Stephen Schumacher previously and I'm sure Neil Dewsnip will want to get back to that that's why Leicester invariably are going to have to be forced wide two wing-backs, big role for them in Argyle colours tonight Dewsbury Hall works it out to this left-hand side Mafadidi approaching the corner of the penalty area works it in field Mafadidi again looking for the right footed curling shot and it just goes wide of Plymouth Argyle's left hand post with Michael Cooper diving to his left fortunately for Argyle the ball was going wide and it remains nil nil yeah, no back lift really just rolls it out of his feet with his studs and it's got to be perfect that didn't quite get the whip on it loads of pace on it but just a yard or so off target 79 goals for Leicester this season in their 41 EFL Championship matches but they've not been in a good run of form. Three wins, one draw and five defeats in their last nine in the league. Well won by Ryan Hardy, but he couldn't get past James Justin on the halfway line. And Leicester will pick up possession again with Winks inside the centre circle. Out to Vestergaard, to Justin on this near side. James Justin has Mavadidi to his left. Justin tried to play it in field, picked up by Ndidi can't find a teammate there's a bit of hesitation at the back there in the penalty area before Michael Cooper comes out slides and gathers the ball to his chest Scar on the edge of the Plymouth Argyle penalty area Plymouth who scored only six goals in their last 11 championship matches and they failed to score in six of those 11 including a run of five in a row here at home park where they lost all five and didn't score in any of those games in fact the last goal that a Plymouth player scored here in the league was way back on Valentine's Day February the 14th in the 2-2 draw against Coventry City where Argyle really should have won but conceded a 96th minute equaliser after some poor defending at the near post and those two points dropped could be crucial come the end of the season Plymouth Argyle nil, Leicester City nil on TalkSport 2 and the ball has gone out of play on that far side it's a throw into Leicester about 10 yards or so inside the Plymouth half Leicester kicking from right to left in this first half as we look out from our position at the top of the main stand Leicester try and work it across cleared away though by Scar but nobody in green picks it up Dewsbury Hall knocks it back now to James Justin Justin is very much playing an advanced role at the moment because we've hardly mentioned Morgan Whitaker, who's up against him tonight Whitaker challenging for the ball now not even sure he's had a touch of it to tell you the truth Sam no they've been a little subdued 
certainly since that little spell of possession which they enjoyed maybe 10 or so minutes ago they look a little bit rattled look a little bit anxious and just struggling to progress the ball up the pitch and exactly what you were just saying a few moments ago the goals have just evaporated recently especially here they need to find a way to get him involved the onus is on Ryan Hardy to be as physically strong as he can be just to alleviate that pressure and get some teammates close to him one positive fact for Plymouth is that Leicester have kept only one clean sheet in their last nine but the lack of goals from Argyle of late has cost them dearly but they work it out to the far side to Mustafa Bundu Miller making the run out just outside him and Mikel Miller now on the overlap crosses it from the left hand side it's blocked by Fatimu and out for an Argyle throw and finally at last we have a little bit of play in and near the Leicester City penalty area because for the last 10 minutes or so it's been pretty much in the Plymouth Argyle half of the pitch Plegazuela 30 yards out from goal works it out to this right hand side to Mumba Mumba can't find a way past Mavadidi and Plymouth will try again and will switch it across to the left hand side to Galloway Galloway looking for the one two but didn't get it from Mikel Miller and Miller gave the ball away rather needlessly there but he's made amends by winning it back over on that far side Whitaker now for Plymouth out to Mumba on this near side to Dan Scar number six on his back Plymouth not going with Lewis Gibson in defence or Ashley Phillips the England under 19 international both of whom have been regulars of late Whitaker inside his own half just too strong with his first touch and it was robbed by Winks Leicester work it out to Mavadini left hand side plays it forward now to Dewsbury Hall Dakum trying to exchange passes there with Mavadini Leicester play it out to the right hand side Fatou infield to Ricardo Winks now out to Justin left hand side Dewsbury Hall looking for the ball inside Morgan Whittaker didn't get there Whittaker clears it long it's a chase on for Hardy Fars should get there first and does so right footed back to his goalkeeper who in turn returns it to the Belgian international and his long hair flowing out behind him as he jogs slowly forward with the ball gives it now to Winks Winks inside his own half central position Justin long down the left hand side looking for Steffi Mavadidi to chase it and Mavadidi's got there into the penalty area left hand side chips it against the defender and it's off Dan Scar's chest and away for a Leicester City corner on this left hand side it could have been crucial just a bit of hesitation there from Michael Coupe he initially decided to come which I think would have been the right decision he would have got there before Mavadidi and able to clear up in the end Mavadidi had the opportunity to deliver so a corner kick then for Leicester on their left away to our left as we look out taken short to Dewsbury Hall Mavadidi chips it long deep towards the far post cleared away though by Bundu for Plymouth picked up though by Justin on the right hand side Leicester still going forward crosses deep it's too high and it's too deep and it's behind and away for a goal kick Plymouth Argyle nil Leicester City nil in the EFL Championship on Talk Sport 2 and here's the thoughts of Sam Parkin yeah, that was a, a decent enough ball, that. Just no takers around the far post. Uh, Mavadidi got into that position, didn't he, recently to score a really crucial goal at the far post to, to head home for Leicester, but a little bit on his heels there. And just not coming off for them that last little bit. They're probing, just unable to find that final ball. Well, they've had chances already, Leicester City, in this first half. Not been able to take them so far. Ricardo to Fars. Advances forward infield to Ricardo central position just outside the penalty area Ricardo looking for the return ball Scar is there though to tidy up and clear it away looking for Ryan Hardy who's the only player in green in an advanced position and Hardy has given away a free kick and you can hear the reaction of the Plymouth Argyle supporters to the referee's decision 
Yeah, he's a huge player for them, Ryan Hardy. So vital. They don't have anyone else like him, but they need to get better quality towards him. He can't just be chasing hopeful long balls all night because he won't be able to last the distance. Mavadidi now for Leicester, advancing forward into the penalty area. Works it to his right. It's behind Dewsbury Hall. Dewsbury Hall gets a left-footed shot away, but it's blocked by two defenders. And Argyle might be able to break now. It's three against three. Worked across to the left-hand side. Mustafa Bundu will pick up now for the home side. Fars comes across to try and prevent him going forward. Bundu scores! Right-footed, low shot into the bottom corner. It's Plymouth Argyle's first shot of the night. And Mustafa Bundu has given struggling Plymouth Argyle the lead against the championship leaders. Plymouth Argyle 1, Leicester City 0. Well, it's a little fortuitous the way the ball ends up at the feet of Adam Forshaw. But I think in the early part of this game, he's actually brought a little bit of calmness to Argyle's midfield and there he picks the right pass they're a little bit disjointed because the run of the ball was a little bit of a deflection that fell nicely for Forshaw but then he punched in a lovely pass into Bundu who has held the width in this opening 20 minutes or so for Argyle and then which is the question of whether he can open up the target and find that far corner and he did it beautifully wonderful cur curling shot a little bit against the run of play nobody inside here cares just watching the replay on the monitor here, he squeezes it in between two defenders. There's only one place that ball can go if it's going to go in. And he picked that spot to precise precision. Yeah, absolutely. We see it so often when forward players are using the defender as a shield. He absolutely does that there from about fast. Just bends it round him inside the Vestergaard. Don't think you can question the goalkeeper there. It's right inside the side netting. It's a wonderful finish. The first goal scored by a Plymouth Argyle player here at Home Park since Valentine's Day. And there was a lot of love for it around Home Park. Leicester have been on top, but it's Plymouth who lead by one goal to nil. Leicester looking for a way back, can't find a way through as the long ball works its way through to Michael Cooper in the Argyle goal. You're listening to Plymouth against Leicester in the AFL Championship on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's. Order McDelivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty rewards points. 18 plus, terms and conditions apply. Can Leicester find a way back? Winks. Works it forward. Dewsbury Hall. Goes down. He was just pulled there. His left arm was just pulled by Forshaw and it's a free kick to Leicester it's about 25 yards out and it is just slightly right of centre they're going to have to just take that one on the chin a little bit John I, I think there's been there's a few passes that have gone astray unquestionably but there's been a vibrancy I think to this opening 20 minutes from Leicester City that was absolutely lacking on Tuesday night so that is a sucker punch doesn't feel good obviously you're out there and you've conceded again but credit to Argyle with brilliant counter-attacking goal but Leicester have to remember for 20 minutes they've controlled proceedings here there are two behind the wall James Justin and Kiernan Dewsbury Hall Plymouth have four in the wall with another on the ground acting as the draft excluder so will it be Justin or will it be Dewsbury Hall Free kick, 25 yards out, slightly right of centre. Justin with the little back heel. Dewsbury Hall hits the shot. It comes off an Argyle defender. It's behind for a Leicester corner. Yeah, quite a distance. Just shifted it a couple of yards, looking to bend it into the bottom right hand corner. Cooper probably would have got there in any case, but the deflection given Leicester City corner on this left hand side. So Leicester have two players inside the six yard area and four more waiting on about the 18-yard line, just inside the penalty area or just outside it. Corner kick comes across, cleared away. Last man back for Leicester is Ricardo Pereira. Lays it square to Winks. Winks out to Dewsbury Hall, left-hand side. Infield to Justin. Justin now works it out wide to Mavadidi. Mavadidi, Dewsbury Hall now, left-hand side. Oh, he's gone past the defender as if he wasn't there. Dewsbury Hall plays the ball infield. And it comes off Scar, and it's behind for another Leicester City corner. But he went past Adam Randall there with such ease, Keenan Dewsbury Hall. Yeah, beautiful stuff. Very good combination, Mavadidi, Dewsbury Hall, always looking for each other on this left-hand side. Corner taken short again. Winks curls it in. Cooper gets both fists to it and punches the ball away. Behind for another corner. 
for Leicester. This time, though, over on the right-hand side. It's the Plymouth Argyle fans that you can hear. But their side are under considerable pressure. It'll be a left-footed in-swinger from Fatawu, who stands with two arms upraised and now delivers it left-footed towards the first attacker who was Patson Daka he didn't get there put behind and it is another corner for Leicester City corners really are mounting up this time it's taken short still plenty in the penalty area waiting to get on the end of it cleared away by the head of Ryan Hardy and it'll be left to bounce behind for another corner by Fatawu. That's three corners in quick succession on the right-hand side now for Leicester City. Dewsbury Hall will take this one. Half a dozen in the Leicester pale orange in the penalty area. And it's very deep indeed towards Vestergaard. Might fall here to Mavadidi, edge of the area. Looks to set up Winks. Winks, right foot shot. And it always was going wide. Plymouth holding on. Plymouth Argyle 1, Leicester City, the championship leaders, nil on Talksport 2. Yeah, decent spell of pressure there from the, the corner kicks. I thought maybe had Mavadidi's touch been a little bit more assured, he could have got the strike away himself. Harry Wicks doesn't get too many from that type of distance and yeah, just didn't catch that well and, and missed the target by, by a distance. But they respond, responded to a degree since going behind. The ball's all been played to our left-hand side since Bundu opened the scoring. Plymouth who've lost five of their last eight in the championship and eight of their last 13 in the league. It's a free kick to Leicester inside their own half. Foul on Fatawu. And the referee will just have words on that far side with Adam Randall. But no more than words from the official Rob Jones. Fars now for Leicester, works it to his left to Vestergaard. Fars into the Plymouth half, but Scar is there ahead of Dakar, and will work it all the way back to Cooper. Cooper right-footed, it's charged down though by Dakar, and behind for the goal kick, but just for a fraction of a second, there was a lot of anxiety amongst the Plymouth faithful. Goal kick then for Plymouth Argyle on the left-hand side. Reminder of the teams for you, for Plymouth, Cooper in goal, Galloway, Scar and Plegazuelo in defence. Miller on the left, Forshaw and Randall in midfield and Mumba on the right. Morgan Whitaker on the right, Ryan Hardy in the middle and Mustafa Bundu on the left. For Leicester City, Hermanson in goal, Fars, Vestergaard and Justin at the back. Ricardo in that sort of floating role, Winks, Dewsbury Hall and Ndidi in midfield, Fatou wide on the right, Mavadidi on the left and Patson Daka, the main central striker. Leicester throw, infield to Winks just inside the Plymouth half, works it out to this left hand side to Justin who plays it out to the left touchline to Mavadidi, Mavadidi coming infield looking to chip it into the penalty area with a delicate ball in, Plymouth able to clear, Vestergaard there though for Leicester City and back to Justin, Vestergaard in a crowd of players but manages to turn and create a little bit of space for himself and Leicester will work it out to the far side to Ndidi. And Didi has the option of Fatou outside him, but goes infield to Winks. Here's Dewsbury Hall, 35 yards out from goal, central position. And now it is worked out wide to the Leicester right, Fatou. Inside now to Ricardo, Fars. Everybody in green, back behind the ball in the final 30, 35 yards of the pitch. Leicester City kicking from right to left in this opening half, looking for an equaliser. And they've got a free kick on that far side. Foul on Abdu Fatou, and it will be a free kick that is just a five or six paces in from the touchline on the far side and a couple of paces in from the goal line. And it's a yellow card as well. First caution of the evening. And it is for the foul on Abdul Fatou. And the yellow card is for Mikel Miller. A little bit harsh, 
It was weird because it was a, it was a poor first touch from Fatu. The ball skipped up off the surface, but he, he used that bit of miscontrol to actually be really forthright and, and front-footed and kind of drove forward with that ne next touch. Maybe just took Miller a little by surprise. Looked like the momentum had maybe gone from the attack when he took the poor first touch. Six Leicester players in the penalty area waiting to get on the end of this free kick. It's free kick on the right-hand side, about eight yards from the goal line. Six paces or so in from the far touchline. It'll be a left-footed in-swinger from Dewsbury Hall. Hits it high. Cooper went to get there, but it was headed away by Scar. Headed back into the area by Fatou. Daka trying to keep that ball alive, and he's done so successfully as well. Plymouth will clear it away, but Plymouth have a man down inside their own penalty area, and he's got his right arm raised. Now, he's got to get off the pitch, surely, to try and prevent Leicester using him in any onside position but the referee has halted play anyway because it does look as though Mikael Miller is in quite a bit of trouble inside his own penalty area yeah he signalled straight away doesn't look good for him I'd be surprised if that's not the end of his his evening his arm went up immediately and we've already spoken about the importance of his and Mumba's roles tonight and, and to this point defensively in particular done really well they've had to done work do well against Fatou and, and Mavadidi arguably the two biggest threats in, in Leicester's lineup. so this will be a blow. Fortunately, Joe Edwards is named on the bench, isn't he? So maybe we may see what we saw for large periods over Schumacher. It's tenure. Edwards on the right, Mumbra on the left. Half a dozen Plymouth Argyle players have come across to this near side to take on water and instructions. Only James Justin has done so for Leicester City. Still receiving treatment over on that far side, Mikael Miller. Welcome to listeners from TalkSport, where it is Plymouth Argyle 1, Leicester City 0. Mustafa Bundu with the goal for Argyle, with basically their only attack of the match. It was a lovely sweet finish, right-footed, curling it across goal, and that's despite the fact, Sam Parkin, that Leicester City have had by far the majority of play so far. Yeah, controlled the ball, had a couple of chances prior to Argyle taking the lead. Just that, that lack of final ball, that, that f final finish, really, from a, a Leicester perspective, and with an hour to go, and probably more, um, it's a long time to hold on. So Argyle need to take care of the ball a little bit more. Adam Forshaw's given them a little bit of control in the midfield, but it can't just be about holding on now because that's a recipe for disaster up against a team like Leicester with so much quality. This match with huge ramifications at the bot and the bottom and the top of the EFL Championship. It's at Plymouth Argyle 1, Leicester City 0. Commentary continues on TalkSport 2. So Miller is being led to this near side and there's plenty of activity in the Plymouth Argyle technical area and we are going to see a change, an enforced change for Plymouth Argyle. Miller who moments earlier had been booked is now having to go off and you do wonder whether with only three matches left of the season that might be the end of his season. Plymouth Argyle will be hoping it isn't. And he trudges off very slowly indeed. Mikhail Miller making his 100th English career appearance. Had a couple of years in Scotland, but it's a century of appearances in England, and he gets a standing ovation from those around us in the main stand here. So Mikhail Miller is off. And on will come Joe Edwards. Joe Edwards, the Plymouth Argyle captain. He takes the captain's armband now from Morgan Whittaker. And we may well see Bally Mumba here move across to the left and Joe Edwards slot in on the right. Plymouth Argyle 1, Leicester City 0. What a huge scoreline that is in the EFL Championship. That's a free kick for Leicester. Although Plymouth could possibly argue with some justification that the defender involved was ran into rather than blocked. He yeah, couldn't get out of the way, could he? No. It's a fair old collision. Justin just shifted the ball slightly to the right but ran into the defender somewhat. So slightly fortuitous award. Free kick then to Leicester. Left-hand side. Just ahead of the midway point in the... Plymouth Argyle half. Plymouth have everybody back behind the ball. It will be delivered by Keenan and Dewsbury Hall. Half a dozen forward for Leicester, hoping to get on the end of it. Dewsbury Hall, left-footed, swings it high. It's deep towards the 
back of the penalty area Plymouth managed to clear it away picked up by Winks right hand side hits it right footed high into the penalty area too high for Fars can't get on the end of it Dewsbury Hall just outside the penalty area works it out now to Mavadidi infield to Justin Mavadidi again well, that's a interesting ball in and it didn't really work and Morgan Whitaker now coming forward for Plymouth can't really make too much progress further than the halfway line because a combination of two defenders for Leicester were there to stop his progress and Leicester will work it back to Hamansa Vestergaard now every single Leicester player outfield player has scored for them this season Leguizuelo and Adam Forshaw have not scored for Plymouth Argyle so far this campaign the only goal of the night Mustafa Bundu for Plymouth Argyle Argyle 1 Leicester City nil on Talksport 2 as Leicester work it out to Fars out now to Fatu on the right hand side cuts in field left footed cross field ball high hangs in the air and gathered perfectly by Mavadidi who works it back now to Justin infield to Winks Leicester having to be patient in probing trying to find their way past the green wall Bally Mumba now providing a different challenge for Abdul Fatouou over on that right hand side for Leicester City and Leicester have to go all the way back to Hermanson who's not had a great deal to do that's Hermanson apart from pick the ball out of his own goal net Leicester work it out to Mavadidi left hand side goes past one challenge of Scar looking to flick it in field Dewsbury Hall Dewsbury Hall goes down in the area referee not at all interested says goal kick and no penalty and to be fair to him no appeals from Keane and Dewsbury Hall either it's just good anticipation Plegazuelo just read the intentions of Dewsbury Hall stepped across him excellent work Enzo Maresca down there in black tracksuit trousers and white training shoes was a little frustrated at the lack of a decision in his side's favour there but it never really looked like being a penalty kick for Leicester City we work it out to the right hand side but it's cut out by Mamba and turned back to Michael Cooper in the Argyle goal Cooper who started the last seven championship matches now following a lot of knee problems over the last year or so Plymouth trying to work it forward Joe Edwards ball is cut out and it'll be a Plymouth throw just down below us in front of the Plymouth Argyle technical area and Edwards on as a substitute for Mikael Miller will stand with the ball above his head gold number on his back glinting underneath the home park floodlights throws it to Whittaker back to Edwards Edwards hopeful ball forward but it was always going to be cut out by Vestergaard and Leicester will work it back to Hermansen away to our right the Danish goalkeeper who has been an unused substitute for the Danish national side but not yet made his full international debut will hit it right footed long into the Plymouth night sky Mumba up against Fatuwu and Bali Mumba will come away with it as he twists and turns Fatuwu fouls him it's an entirely different proposition for Abdul Fatuwu now up against Bally Mumba as opposed to Mikael Miller earlier in the match he's been quiet actually I've been disappointed with Leicester's right hand side and Didi has hardly featured at all they've looked a lot more vibrant down this left Dewsbury Hall Mavadidi I've actually thought Dak has done okay and, and the reason for that is that he's just moved around a little bit he's not just stayed as that central focal point he's actually pulled wide to get on the ball long ball down the left of Plymouth Argyle picked up by the goal scorer Bundu works it back now to Mumba and it can't be returned back to Bally Mumba by Mustafa Bundu and it's out for a Leicester City throw in inside their own half midway inside their own half and it's taken quickly to Winks Winks immediately under pressure back to Wout Fars Fars infield to Hermanson inside his own six yard area clears it out to this left hand side to Justin Justin forward towards the centre circle looking for Dakar but he was never going to get there because Adam Randall got there first Plymouth work it back to Cooper forward now to Randall Randall right footed down the inside right channel looking for Ryan Hardy to chase onto it Vestergaard is there first 
and Vestergaard clears it away and it's a throw into Plymouth much to Yannick Vestergaard's frustration the throw in taken quickly towards Ryan Hardy Hardy couldn't get there Leicester will half clear it away but can't get it out of their own penalty area at the moment now they will Hermansen left footed oh he sliced it really high straight up into the air Edwards is underneath it infield now to Forshaw Forshaw turns clips it to his left one two Forshaw Bundu right footed shot got right underneath it skied it well well over and that was a really promising move from Plymouth Argyle it was it was a terrible decision from the officials clearly the ball struck Ryan Hardy should have been a lesser throw that would have come back I'm sure to the officials had that end in the goal but there was that calmness again from Adam Forshaw lovely couple of little passes to Bundu really unselfish as well he could have taken the strike on himself with his left foot but just set it back for Bundu once more to come in and try and bend but unfortunately just got too much elevation on the strike yellow card for a challenge on Dewsbury Hall inside the Leicester half and it is a yellow card for Randall no it's uh, for sure for sure sliding in that's not particularly calm um, I praised him for his assurance on the ball but yeah he's got that in his game as well he's combative in midfield but just a little late there and that looked like a, a good decision on that occasion from the official second portion then for Plymouth but Mikael Miller the earlier yellow carded player having gone off injured Plymouth Argyle 1 Leicester City 0 what a scoreline in the EFL Championship you'll be able to follow every twist and turn of the finale of the EFL season with us here on the TalkSport Network live and exclusive national radio commentaries of all the key games over the next few weeks Vestergaard hits it right footed looking for Ndidi Ndidi chests it down but Galloway is there first to nip it away from him and Galloway racing up towards the halfway line brought down by Fatavu Argyle fans screaming for a caution against Abdul Fatawu. and as you can hear from the booze the yellow card staying firmly in Rob Jones's pocket yeah, running into trouble Galloway there into Leicester shirts but Fatawu needs to box cleverer than that you want to get back and get goal side for your team but you can't put any contact onto the player Randall works it outside to Bundu Bundu forward now to Mumba Mumba can't uh, make progress and Leicester will clear it away long deep towards Patson Dacca Scar is there here's Galloway now 42 and a half minutes played at home Parker first half that has fairly flown by Leicester very much in the ascendancy at first but then Mustafa Bundu's goal really brought home park to life but it has really by and large been pretty much all Leicester since then they've had a number of excellent chances in this half but it is Plymouth who have the goal and what a huge three points this could be for Plymouth Argyle in their battle to stave off the threat of relegation back to League One after just one season in the Championship long way to go though forward comes Mavadidi Dewsbury Hall left hand side Dewsbury Hall back across the penalty area comes off the chest of Forshaw and gathered by Cooper yeah, a little bit of good fortune again just running back towards his own goal Forshaw but the ricochet takes it into the arms of Michael Cooper and that was slightly better from Leicester City the game's become a little fragmented a little bit bitty maybe since the Argyle opener they haven't done enough they haven't re responded in a brilliant fashion they haven't created too much at all on Cooper's goal early part of the game yes in control had the chances to go with it but since then it's been pretty even fair a really combative first half here at home park and it will be a free kick to Plymouth Argyle foul on Bundu in the left hand side as Plymouth attack from left to right in this first half which is rapidly drawing to a close we're in the 45th minute fourth official James Lennington will shortly show us how much additional time is to be played there might be a bit of that because of the injury to Mikel Miller so we're about to go into additional time then Argyle with a free kick left hand side 
plenty forward including Scar including Galloway as well but it's far too far forward and it was an easy catch for Hermanson who looks to release quickly can't do so and has to throw out to Justin on this left hand side Winks back to Justin infield now to Ricardo fourth official indicates a minimum of four minutes additional time and we're into those four minutes now Faz crosses the halfway line just right of the center circle infield to Winks Winks looking for the run of Mavadidi Mavadidi just pushes Joe Edwards although I think it's fair to say that Edwards made the most of it it's a bit of a gamble I suppose it was great run brilliant movement he stayed quite wide Mavadidi throughout this first half but there saw the opportunity to just dart in between wing back and right sided centre half and yeah got to just again be a little bit cleverer than that try and avoid having any contact because invariably the uh, the referee as Robert Jones did there would side with the defender running back to his, towards his own goal Leicester City the championship leaders have lost their last two away championship matches by one goal to nil at Bristol City and at Millwall on Tuesday night Cooper hangs that free kick long it's away though by Vestergaard Galloway picks up inside the centre circle back to Vestergaard again this time heads it out across to the far side the Leicester right where it can't be kept in play by Fatawu it is a Leicester throw just inside their own half Neil Dusnip stands hand behind his back clasped together now moves them and frantically issues instructions as Leicester come forward down the left hand side with Justin forward to Mavadidi back to Justin closed down by Forshaw Leicester working the ball around nicely Fars forward to Ndidi just inside the Plymouth half on the far side the Leicester right worked in field by Fatawu now to Winks Winks just ahead of the centre circle Leicester going from left to right and back again Justin back in now to Vestergaard not too much in the way of options for Vestergaard threads it through to Dakar Dakar's ball can't find and Didi oh and there's a mistake there from Bally Mumba as he tried to control it it cannoned away off him and behind for a corner and a very unnecessary corner yeah just a little bit loose lapse of concentration and they've had a number of, of corners they varied them well actually Leicester City just been unable to carve out that big opening two and a half minutes played of the minimum of four minutes additional time corner is delivered cleared away though by Randall last outfield player back for Leicester is Ricardo plays it forward now to Winks out now to the far side to Dewsbury Hall still four waiting in the middle for Leicester if a cross can be delivered Leicester work it back to Ricardo right hand side down the inside right channel midway inside the Plymouth half works it out to Fatawu Fatawu can't find a way past Mumba picks it up again and the flag is raised on the far side and there's a Plymouth Argyle free kick inside their own half and the referee is reaching for his pocket and you can hear the applause because it is the first yellow card for a Leicester City player and that caution will go I think to Ndidi yeah, it was a bit wild I'm pleased it's only a yellow because it looked like he lost his footing to me sometimes they can look a little worse and the crowd on that far side were up and pay him for blood Robert Jones I think gets the decision correct Plymouth Argyle 1 Leicester City nil. last few seconds of an enthralling first half which has repercussions at both ends of the EFL championship table long free kick and it goes harmlessly behind for a Leicester City goal kick and this might well be the last action of the first half Dewsbury Hall spots up the goal kick and Rob Jones blows his whistle and listen to that roar from the Plymouth Argyle supporters as they, as one, get to their feet to applaud their team performance against the championship leaders Mustafa Bundu with the only goal of a fascinating first half at home park Leicester City, the championship leaders, are trailing Plymouth Argyle relegation strugglers are leading at half time on Talksport 2 it is Plymouth Argyle 1 Leicester City 0 and a rather pensive Enzo Maresca makes his way down to the changing rooms he has 
a lot to ponder, I think, uh, when you think about that first half performance from Leicester City, who need more if they are to go on and lift this championship title. Things not going very well for them at all uh, at the moment. At Sam Parkin, who's inside Home Park, it's been a great response uh, from Plymouth Argyle after an, an opening 15 or 20 minutes or so from Leicester City where you thought it could be another ominous evening just like it was at the King Power when they lost 4-0 in the reverse fixture. But suddenly the game came to life thanks to the goal from Mustafa Bundu on 22 minutes and it has really changed the rhythm of the match. What have you made of that first half? Yeah, I think inevitably sometimes when you come up against the, the better sides in the division that, that like to possess the ball, it takes a little bit of working out, it takes a little bit of time probably just to, to, to listen to the, the coaches on the touchline and sort it out amongst yourselves. And I think it, they were a little bit cold from the off, a little bit anxious maybe. Plymouth Argyle and, and needed the goal really in essence needed to weather that early Leicester storm where they made a few openings the Ricardo one probably been the uh, the most likely to end in the goal and um, yeah the, the goal came at a really good period for them because they'd been unable to connect with the front players to progress the ball up to the pitch to get it into Whitaker and Hardy they would not really featured at that stage so yeah it was an exceptional goal really good goal um, a little bit out of the, the blue in, in comparison to the way they'd started um, and then from then on in the game became a little bit bitty um, a little bit fragmented but Leicester haven't responded in the, in the fashion that you would imagine them doing so so they can't have too many complaints and you know if realistic form is to show you anything they've lost three similar type two similar type games to tonight by the solitary goal it's how they respond in the second half now the goal as you mentioned there was wonderfully taken from Bundu but it was about Plymouth Argyle and I thought it would have been the message from before the game about needing to take the opportunities when they present themselves you know aside from the finish itself I think the way that the ball was just played into the space as Plymouth Argyle broke allowed him to take on Valtfest one-on-one -on -one, and maybe he will feel like he could have committed a little bit earlier or maybe if he did he would have got skinned anyway and it would have been a great opportunity I don't know what he made of how Leicester defended that that goal yeah well I think I haven't had the luxury of seeing it back but it was a little bit um, fortuitous the way it landed at Forshaw's um, feet in the midfield mm -hmm. I do think his passing has been really good though Hugh I think it, it took him and, and Randall a little bit of time to react to what Leicester were doing in that first half I think having Whitaker and kind of Bundu a little bit narrower to give them that four in the midfield probably helped to stop Leicester being able to play through them but yeah Forshaw's passing has been really good in the first half I thought it was an excellent spot really good pass and and, and Bundu, I suppose, if you're being uber critical, you probably show him on the outside. I mean, he's a, a, essentially a centre forward playing wide on the left hand side. He doesn't want to go wide, he doesn't really want to be taken down the outside. So maybe Fast should have just shown him on his left side, shut off the, 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 the space infield so he couldn't get the strike away. But always you've got to credit the, the, the forwards mm. in those, those situations. He still had a lot to do, drove with the ball, what, 30 yards or so, and then and then bent a sumptuous effort into the corner. So no, it was it was a great goal of course you can pick holes in the way that Leicester defended it but yeah brilliant goal from from a player that um, yeah has, has shown in in pockets this season that he's very capable lovely lovely goal incredible atmosphere when it hit the back of the net you mentioned that Leicester City response Sam Enzo Moresco always stresses or at least he has recently that his side's performance levels have been really high and so he's not been too worried about the results well surely he's concerned at half time here yeah and he continuing criticism of Moresco I think from the supporters that watch the team week in week out that there is no plan B that he just wants to do plan A better well when you consider they lost at Bristol City as I just said and, and lost at Millwall on Tuesday I think he has to do something in this second half I don't think he can just expect them to turn it around because they've got good players um, there's a little bit of variation within, they, within the way they play in terms of Ricardo moves around a little bit it takes up different positions his instruction seems to be more as we've seen during the majority of the season playing alongside Harry Winks tonight but with Cannon and, and Vardy in particular on the bench I think he has to go with two strikers if they don't get the goal soon I think he has to go with two strikers uh, at some stage and I think probably just to change the shape a little bit and just ask some different questions of the of the home side who will have done their homework they have absolutely looked how Bristol City and more recently Millwall got their success and it looks like the same guys playing out in front of us so it's pretty drastic times now I think required from Leicester so I'm not convinced he'll act 
but I think he probably needs to. OK, Sam Parkin will be back with John Roder very, very shortly for a big 45 minutes. Leicester City never really get a warm welcome at Home Park and tonight's visit has been no different. Plymouth Argyle fighting to stay in the division and they've given themselves something to hold on to at the break. Live and exclusive EFL action on TalkSport 2 could be another big shock on the way in the championship. At the break, it is Plymouth Argyle 1, Leicester City 0. TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the EFL. EFL Live on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's. Bring on the ultimate dream team. The classic quarter pounder with cheese and a side of fries. Order McDelivery now on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points delivered too. 18 plus. Rewards account required. Participating restaurants. Subject to availability. Delivery fees and terms apply. Going to the shops isn't everyone's bag. Like Toby here. He'd rather nurture his plants. So he gets everything he needs for dinner delivered to his door from as little as 20 minutes with Tesco Whoosh. Keep reaching for the sun, Arthur. You're growing so fast, little one. Blooming lovely, aren't you? Carry on, Toby. Tesco Whoosh. Every little helps. Fees apply delivery times 20 to 60 minutes, selected areas. Whoosh specific pricing, see tesco.com slash whoosh. Where would we be without curiosity? It's the drive that takes us to new places. It even got us to the moon. So satisfy your curiosity about electric cars with the Hyundai Explore Electric event, which is on until the 30th of June, where you'll find our award-winning range of electric cars, including the Ionic 5. Explore more at hyundai.co.uk. It's the dawn of a new Hyundai. Hi all. How are we doing? Afternoon. 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 Let's get this meeting. Meeting. Meeting started. Hi. 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 Hi mom. Where's the, Where's the tablet gone? When everyone's home, EE Work Mode prioritizes your broadband for working from home with faster speeds in more places than anyone else. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got you loud and clear. Clear as a bell. This is broadband made for working from home. Search EE Broadband. Powered by BT. Work Mode with EE Smart Hub Plus to verify see ee.co.uk slash claims. Boots Online Prescription is the service that fits around you. So if you're busy doing this, you can click and collect from a store that suits you. And if you're doing this, we'll send reminders so you have one less thing to think about. Even if you're doing this, you can still be managing everyone's prescriptions from one account. For expert advice, just pop in store and do this. Hi, can I speak to a Boots pharmacist, please? It's easy to sign up. Visit boots.com slash pharmacy today. Boots, with you for life. Participating surgeries, NHS prescription fees may apply. Free delivery England only. Happy birthday to you. Okay, Nathan, you're next. Happy birthday to you. Uh, Mum, my birthday's not till next month. Like getting your money's worth? Grab a McDonald's, save a meal deal. That's a cheeseburger or mayo chicken, medium fries and drink for just 3 99 also available via Just Eat until the 7th of May. Delivery price uplift and fees apply. Price may vary. TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the Premier League and the English Football League. Saturday afternoon. Live championship football. On TalkSport 2. And he's gone straight in! Leeds United versus Blackburn Rovers. Coverage from 12 noon. Kick-off 12.30. What a great bit of play. Saturday afternoon. On live football dynamo. TalkSport 2. Here we go. Super hard, super tough, super league on TalkSport 2. Absolutely magnificent. Fast-paced, full-contact coverage of the ultimate hard-hitting rugby tournament. And they're over the line. Broadcasting live commentary of over 40 games across the season. And we got the greatest comeback in Super League history. Including the Rivals Weekend, the Magic Weekend and the Super League Grand Final live from Old Trafford. They're back into the game. Scrum down for all the rock and roll action of Super League this season on TalkSport 2. EFL Live on TalkSport 2. So it is, top of the table, Leicester City against Plymouth Argyle in 20th. Both teams desperate for points for very different reasons. Chance maybe for a shot here from Ricardo. He goes for the one, two, and Ricardo right-footed. Cooper with the save, diving to his left to push it away. Mustafa Bundu will pick up now for the home side. Fars comes across to try and prevent him going forward. Bundu, scores! Right 
footed, low shot into the bottom corner. It's Plymouth Argyle's first shot of the night, and Mustafa Bundu has given struggling Plymouth Argyle the lead. A little bit against the run of play, nobody inside here cares. Plymouth Argyle 1, Leicester City 0. Well, Leicester City's plan to move three points clear at the top of the championship table and get straight back to winning ways after a midweek defeat has hit a pretty big snag after Mustafa Bundu's lovely opener has put Plymouth Argyle ahead at the break. And as it stands, Argyle are moving five points clear of the relegation zone and the championship title race is taking another twist with the leaders staring at a seventh league game without victory in their last and still a long way to go and a big 45 minutes ahead of us coming up very, very shortly. Uh, by the way, the live Premier League football will continue this weekend on the TalkSport Network. We've got two games coming up your way tomorrow afternoon. Our focus on both the race for the top four and the fight for Premier League survival as well. We're punching it now and finds the bottom corner. Alexander Isak. Lights up St James's Park, 15th Premier League goal of the season. Yeah, Alex is in a really good place mentally, physically. An exceptional talent. I hope he'll even get, get even better from this point. I think there's more to come from him. Are heading into the top four in typically thrilling fashion. Tottenham Hotspur three, Nottingham Forest one. No, we're not there after four games, it's after you know 30 odds, so it um, means we're there because of the football we played and we're just going to continue to do that. The low ball in looking for Ward and Chris Ward drives in the equaliser. He has been absolutely red hot. Slides it through, Lamina is there, they've won it. It's A very, very busy weekend across the TalkSport network. Tomorrow lunchtime, exclusive on TalkSport. We will be at St. James's Park, Newcastle taking on Tottenham Hotspur, Reshman Chowdhury, Sam Matterface and the former England captain Stuart Pearce with you for that one here on TalkSport 2. Another exclusive game comes from the Championship and it could be a massive one for Leeds United depending on events tonight at Home Park. They host Blackburn Rovers who will be eyeing a big win in terms of their own survival as well. A Faker Rothers commentary comes from Adam Bridge and the former Scotland Chris, uh, striker Chris Ualumo as well. We'll have game day live with Adrian Durham, Ray Parler and Danny Mills on Talk Sport going around the grounds of course with all the goals as they go in uh, including Manchester City against Luton and Brentford against Sheffield United. All the classified results from around 5 o'clock. Here on Talk Sport 2 at 3 o'clock tomorrow Nottingham Forest versus Wolves in the Premier League not on UK TV so make sure you check that one out on Sunday, it's the Women's FA Cup semi-final on TalkSport 2 as Spurs take on Leicester and the Sunday session, 1.30 on TalkSport uh, on Sunday as well. Plenty to catch up with alongside Sam Matterface. 2.35 here on TalkSport 2 will be the second Women's FA Cup semi-final between Manchester United and and Chelsea and we will also have game night on Monday evening as Chelsea hosts Everton at Stamford Bridge it has been another difficult week for the Toffees after yet another points deduction was handed to the club this time it was two points TalkSport reporter Matt Jones has been speaking with winger Dwight McNeil and defender Jared Branthwaite uh, well guys uh, another interesting week shall we say uh, for Everton football club the the two point deduction Jared first of all tell us how as a group you've reacted to that yeah it's obviously um, not the best news to hear but we reacted the same way we reacted with the first um, nothing we can do about it uh, it's out of our hands and um, we've just got to react by getting points on the pitch how did you find out about it as a group was it something that kind of dripped through or were you all called together and told Dwight uh, we had a meeting around half one quarter to two um, on that day with with the gaffer and with, the, with Kev um, so we had a meeting about and we got we got told and then we just had another reminder of what happened last time in the position that we was in and how we got out of it so we're just uh, trying to focus on, on us and try and do what what we did last time when we got some points deducted So going out there with the right ambition to win every game and, and see where that takes at the end of the season and Obviously you got that win against Burnley at the weekend which looks even more crucial now but crucially it gives you momentum going into these final weeks of the season Yeah definitely it was a massive win at, at the weekend despite what's gone on this week it was still a massive win win for the lads so we've just got to take take that winning mentality into the next next seven games and like what Jared said we've got to go in wanting to win every game because 
points at this part of the season, especially now crucial. And next up is Chelsea, uh, which is a game for you, Jared, that must bring back uh, some good memories of Stamford Bridge a couple of seasons ago. Yeah, um, nice memories. Uh, obviously scored a goal there, so hopefully they can do that again on Monday night. Uh, that would be nice. Um, and obviously, hopefully we can get a win. Everton will be looking on Monday night for a big game in terms of a big result in terms of their own survival in the Premier League as they had to Stamford Bridge Adrian Durham Sam Matterface and the former England midfielder Danny Murphy with you for that one tonight Plymouth looking for a big three points in terms of their championship survival they lead Leicester by a goal to nil at the break the second half about to get underway in the company of the former Ipswich striker Sam Parkin and Talk Sports John Roder. Welcome back. We've just kicked off the second half. No changes to either team in terms of half-time substitutions. Mustafa Bundu's goal after 22 minutes is the difference between these two sides. Plymouth Argyle kicking from right to left in this second half in their all green with gold trimmings. Leicester City in their change colours tonight of a very pale orange shirts with white shorts and pale orange socks run through the two teams for you in just a moment but uh, Plymouth have th a throw on the far side and we wait to see Sam Parkin whether Leicester will change anything because they now have to chase this game yeah a little Plymouth. bit surprised they haven't rolled the dice already Plymouth on that right hand side again win a throw in Edwards will take Joe Edwards on as a substitute in the first half for the injured Mikael Miller Argyle work it all the way back to Dan Scar just inside his own half out on the right hand side infield now to Galloway who works it all the way back to Michael Cooper in goal so it's Cooper in goal a back three of Plegozuelo Scar and Galloway in midfield Edwards Randall Forshaw and Mumba Morgan Whitaker on the right Mustafa Bundu the goal scorer on the left and Ryan Hardy up front for Leicester City, Mads Hermanson in goal, James Justin, Vestergaard and Fars across the back, Ricardo just floating around in that role that he likes, and Didi, Dewsbury, Hall and Winks in midfield, Fatu wide on the right, Mavadidi wide on the left, Patson Dacca leading the line, Jamie Vardy on the bench. The championship leaders trailing to the team who desperately need points to move away from the bottom of the table. It's cleared away by Cooper, into touch on the far side and it'll be a Leicester City throw Leicester City attacking the goal away to our right behind which the 2,000 or so Leicester City fans who have travelled here are housed in their blue shirts by and large not too many of the replica shirts that their team are actually playing in tonight on show amongst their supporters and Leicester will work it all the way back to Hermanson just outside his own penalty area right footed hits it long scars underneath it meets it with a firm header out towards that far side infield though comes Dewsbury Hall Dewsbury Hall left footed shot straight at Cooper who clutches it to his chest yeah he's certainly the one at the moment for Leicester first half as well getting between the lines I like him I prefer him in this role he played too high for my money at Millwall where the space was saturated really by a really good rear guard action today he's been able to get on the ball get turned even early part of this second half his touch looks really assured need to keep feeding him the ball here is Dewsbury Hall inside the centre circle and breaks into the Plymouth half can't work the ball forward cleared away by Randall deep into the Leicester half Vestergaard's on the chase Hardy is chasing him down and it will go out for a throw on the far side to Leicester City. Leicester top of the championship on goal difference from Ipswich. Both have 88 points. And the throw on the far side is forward by about 10 yards or so. Justin being urged to go back. Leicester's goal difference now plus 41. Ryan Hardy just given a yellow card there, which is the reason for the boost, presumably something that he did in trying to attempt to block that throw I didn't kick see the ball it. away I think oh, John it? yeah he just kind of ushered it out of play Vestergaard so he just I suppose eating up a few seconds already early part of the second half Hardy now cutting into the penalty area trying to get a left footed shot away too many defenders in his way lays it back to Forshaw Whitaker, left footed takes a deflection off a Leicester defender and away by Leicester but there is a foul clear foul as well by Bundu shoving over a Leicester defender in the Leicester penalty area 
Plymouth Argyle 1, Leicester City 0 on TalkSport 2 Leicester's goal difference now plus 41 Ipswich's goal difference is plus 32 Leeds are one point behind on 87 points they have the best goal difference though that's on plus 43 and if goal difference comes into play at the bottom of the table then Plymouth's is by far and away the best of those teams down there as some strong challenges going in on the halfway line and the referee might well be reaching for his pocket again here indeed he is and a yellow card that time for Yannick Vestergaard or was it Whitaker? certainly seemed to be showing a card towards the Leicester defender it's Morgan Whitaker He's shown yellow. And I think he's lucky he gets a little bit on the ball, even though he has to go through Vestergaard to get that contact on the football. It's a, it's a poor challenge. Again, it's a, a clear yellow card. It's raining a little bit down here now, isn't it, as well? So a little bit of extra zip and slide on the surface. Two of Plymouth Argyle's front three then. Whitaker and Hardy. The other, Mustafa Bundu, the goal scorer, after 22 minutes. Plymouth have a throw then, on the far side, Plymouth kicking from right to left as we look out from the main stand here at Home Park, it's the opposite side to that from which matches are televised. Here's the handball against the Leicester defender, not given by the referee Rob Jones. It's again a strong challenge goes in and this time Plymouth Argyle do get the decision in their favour. Inside the Leicester half about 10-12 yards on the right hand side and a couple of yards in from the far touch line Forshaw tries to steal a few extra metres then takes it short Whitaker can't find a way through though and away comes Mavadidi now for Leicester blocked though by Plegozuelo strong challenge from the Spanish defender who conceded a penalty at Leicester in the 4-0 defeat at the King Power back in December it was 1-0 at half time in that game Three more in the second half for Leicester, who are coming forward on the right-hand side with Fatou. Fatou chips it into the middle, headed away by Scar at the expense of a corner. But there was real danger there at the back for Plymouth Argyle. Yeah, dealt with it well in the end. Then Scar at the near post. Fatou dug out a really good delivery, actually, on his on his right foot. Dakar possibly he's got to be making that dart across the near post, across the goalkeeper. A little bit on his heels once more. First corner for Leicester then in the second half, taken short to Dewsbury Hall. Works it back now to Winks. Winks back out now to Fatou. Fatou trying to clip it in. Left footed, does so. Plymouth Argyle able to clear it away. Not too far. Justin, edge of the area. Chips it forward. Dakar can't quite get there. He was trying to anticipate the little dink ball into the penalty area. But it came off an Argyle head and over his head. There's a clever little ball actually from James Justin. Just reverses it in. Left footed. Little flick from Vestergaard. But I think the intended target was Dakar. But just a little bit away from him, couldn't get onto the ball Leicester throw it on the far side, on the halfway line Leicester have lost their last two away matches by one goal to there's another strong challenge going in on the far side and the referee will want words here and it is quite strong words as well from Rob Jones towards Joe Edwards and in the meantime Leicester City are making a change Wilfred Ndidi is coming off and Dennis Pratt is coming on in his place the Belgian international he has one goal this season scored in the FA Cup fourth round win against Birmingham City so Pratt is on and he's taken up a role on the right-hand side of midfield for the Foxes. Fatou looking to take on Mumba. Back to Pratt. Infield now to the figure of Ricardo. Fars back out to Fatou. It's more of the same from Leicester, isn't it? Left to right, right to left. Look for an opening. And if there isn't one, start that movement all over again. 
Left hand side now, Mavadidi. Just lays it back. Infield now to Winks. <laughs> to Ricardo. Ricardo. Fars. 25 yards out from goal. Scoops the ball up right footed. Argyle easily able to clear. Vestergaard kneels. Heads it forward. But Argyle are there first. Whitaker lays it back. Dewsbury Hall can't get there. He does now eventually. Kean and Dewsbury Hall. Options to his right. Here's Ricardo. 35 yards out from goal. Central position. Fars. Works it out now to Fatuwu on the right hand side. Fatuwu left footed infield to Fars again Leicester again looking for that intricate passing movement to try and find a way through and pass the Argyle defence they might have done it as well Fatu into the middle Dakar misses from about three yards out applied a delicate touch right footed expected to see it nestling in the bottom corner but it went wide what a chance for Leicester City yeah and they worked the, the chance brilliantly and it's another to add to a, a catalogue of missed chances really for Dakar recently he makes a great run slightly behind him maybe I think he still has got to turn that onto the target yeah great approach play down the right that's what Dennis Pratt will give you above indeedy I suppose a little bit more penetration with his passing he's got an excellent right foot I expect him to pull wide and try and probably get an additional body on this right hand side to make it really tricky for Mumba and that's how it worked out there goal kick to Plymouth worked on there by Bundu's head picked up by Fars for Leicester who work it back into their own half but the clearance is poor Bundu works it forward now to Whitaker, who's offside and was offside by a good pace or so as well as he ran forward to try and get on the end of that ball forward from Mustafa Bundu Plymouth Argyle 1 Leicester City nil on Talk Sport 2 the home of the EFL and what a climax we are going to have to the EFL season in all three divisions Leicester work it forward Dakar right hand side of the penalty area just slips slightly works it out now to Fatawu Fatawu faced by Mumba Fatawu chips it across deep Mavadidi's header back towards Harry Winks Winks with the first time volley left with it it was blocked there's appeals for a penalty from Leicester more in hope than an expectation and in fact the decision has gone the way of Plymouth Argyle yeah I think Harry Winks has just tried to kid the referee there again down the right hand side it's built really lovely again by Dennis Pratt's pass into, into Dakar Fatou with the delivery once more got his strike away Harry Winks but I think even when the ball ricochets away from the initial defender he's made his mind up that he's going over there he's hoping to just tow it away get the contact uh, and win a, a penalty but the referee was on to him free kick then for Plymouth Argyle inside their own half kicking from right to left in this second half long from Cooper Leicester pick up inside the centre circle but it's not held on to by Mavadidi and Foreshort works it out to this left hand side lovely ball forward down with left wing Bundu chasing gets there just before the goal line now advances sideways into the penalty area leaves it now for Foreshort Foreshort just showed a little bit too much of that to Wout Fars and the Leicester defender was across to make the block but that was an exciting move from Plymouth Argyle yeah, there's a slightly better connection now I think they've got hold of it this game Randall with a, a brilliant ball down the left hand side flighted absolutely perfectly and just a slightly unfamiliar position maybe for Foreshaw taking up driving into the 18 yard box he prefers to be picking it up deeper his touch let him down Dennis Pratt poor ball long range shot from Whitaker. didn't really get too much power on it at all and Hermanson was right behind it such a pacey game being played at a frantic speed Ricardo inside the centre circle to Winks Winks right footed down the inside left channel and he's found Mavadidi Mavadidi left footed across the goal and it's all the way across the goal and indeed it's gone out for a throw in on this near side but Leicester Sam Parkin are looking very threatening indeed yeah wonderful pass from Harry Winks possibly the best of the night almost telepathic between him and Mavadidi just a look and he knew exactly when he was going to stride forward there Mavadini the timing was impeccable angle against him I think just get hold of that just calm down there's another half an hour to go in this game wait for the support and pick a better pass the shot wasn't on there Plymouth Argyle have kept only three clean sheets in their last 21 all those three clean sheets were away from home their last clean sheet here at home park in the league was back at the end of November 2-0 win here over Sunderland it's a long long time since the goalkeepers have had a shutout here for Plymouth Argyle and they're under pressure again here Dakar did he keep that ball in play well he did didn't look like it but he did and Leicester will pick up with Harry Winks 
Winks works it forward. Afgal looking to the referee, hoping that they were going to get a free kick. They've not done so. Mavadidi, left-hand side of the penalty area, chips it in, right-footed, looking for Dakar. Isn't going to find him, though, and it's behind for a goal kick. And down below us, Enzo Maresca strides forward, hands above his head, applauding his players' efforts. But it's the Plymouth fans that you can hear. What a scoreline this is, with ramifications at both ends of the EFL Championship table. Leicester work it into the middle, Pratt with a header. Always going over from about seven yards out from Dennis Pratt. And again, Maresca comes to the edge of his technical area, hands above his head, applauding. Because they are certainly pressing now, Leicester, the league leaders, as we pass the hour mark. Plymouth Argyle 1, Leicester City 0 on TalkSport 2. Yeah, they're starting to make chances now, excellent from Mavadidi, the, the, the first opportunity and I can see the dissatisfaction from the Leicester City supporters because Daka hasn't got onto the initial cross from Mavadidi but he's quite unpredictable as a centre forward, you don't know exactly when that ball is going to come in. There, Dennis Pratt had made a, a really intelligent run from deep and just got a fraction too much on his header but they're in their groove now, starting to ask real questions of Argyle. Justin for Leicester, advances forward, plays it into the penalty area, down goes Patson, Dakar hoping for a penalty, he felt his shirt was pulled, didn't look like it, and Rob Jones says that is a goal kick. What a frustration beginning to creep into Leicester's yeah, play. Yeah, and what I don't like about it, a lot of it's been directed towards Dakar, and I'm watching him closely, as I do all centre forwards, his movement is good. He's moved the centre-halves around today. His all-round play has actually been OK. And this is with hindsight of, of seeing Jamie Vardy play the role on, on Tuesday night. So it's just because he's not getting the goals. And he's obviously passed up a good opportunity tonight. But in fairness, nobody's getting the goals for Leicester at the moment. But I still envisage that change probably being made next 10 minutes or so. I was gonna say, you mentioned Jamie Vardy. We're going to see him at some point, aren't we? Yeah, him or Cannon. Obviously, I think Cannon's been not in the squad the last couple of match days. Um, no, he's missed four. He was out injured. He was injured on international duty with uh, the Republic of Ireland under 21s. Yeah, I'd like to see both of them introduced, to be honest. But whether the, the manager has that change in his armory, and this isn't a criticism, it's just in keeping with the rest of the season, he's not going to want to go with two strikers probably until very late in the day and it feels like tonight's a little bit different it feels like this is a little bit desperate Bundu now for Plymouth crosses the halfway line just eased out of the way by Fatou infield now to Winks exchanges passes with Wout Fars Leicester have lost three of their last five away from home in the championship at Leeds in February and their last two on the road at Bristol City on Good Friday and Millwall on Tuesday. Pratt now, right hand side, down the inside right channel, looking for Dakar, but there was too much on the ball forward from Dennis Pratt. A fact that he acknowledges, and we're going to have a change at the back now for Plymouth Argyle. And off will come Mustafa Bundu, the goal scorer. So he is withdrawn to a rousing reception from the Argyle faithful. And Lewis Gibson will come on in his place. So a defender on for the wide left striker. And Gibson will come on and presumably he will go to a back four. Gibson just going around issuing instructions to virtually everybody. Here's the message. Uh, yeah, it looks that way, doesn't it? It looks like Whitaker's just going to go and play infield with Ryan Hardy. Leicester look. have it with Hermansen. Inside his own penalty area. Real chance, half a chance there for Plymouth, who hoped for a penalty kick as it appeared as Adam Randall might have been pulled back there by Ricardo. Referee, again, not interested. Well, certainly tug, maybe the official felt that there was no way that Rando was going to be able to get onto the ball so just gave the defender the benefit of the doubt, maybe just instinct took over there for Ricardo, but certainly risky. Gibson gets his first touch of the ball, looks like he's playing as the left of the two centre-backs, Randall works it back now to Gibson. 
Gibson forward now to Galloway who loses out to Dakar, edge of the penalty area, works it out to Pratt on this near side, Galloway is back there, anticipated that ball and clears the way to safety, out of play on this near side and Enzo Maresca hurries across quickly to bark out some instructions to his players. Dewsbury Hall, central position, midway inside the Plymouth half, Leicester remember in this second half, kicking from left to right as we look out from the main stand here at home park. Ricardo, Fars, wide to the right to Fatou, Fatou up against Mumba, Fatou lays it back now to Fars, Fars the little touch in field, Leicester try and play it through but Winks' ball is harmless and is picked up by Michael Cooper, 65 minutes played on TalkSport 2, Plymouth Argyle 1, Leicester City 0 and I don't think anybody but anybody would have predicted this scoreline after 65 minutes Sam Parkin no but here we are again for Leicester City that was Plymouth Argyle back momentarily in a back six I counted there the uh, unfamiliar 6-2-2 formation it looked like with the two midfield players just in that space in front of the two centre halves as it, is, as it is now but the two wide midfield players Edwards and Mumba getting back really compact so yeah certainly a defensive change and hoping to get across the line with the 1-0 Ricardo slips in the centre circle but manages to recover his footing and works it back to Fars. Fars has Fatou on this near side, wants Fatou to make more of a run but he stood still but he now picks up and comes in field, left footed, lays it into Winks, Winks just ahead of the centre circle, out to his left hand side to Justin, Justin 25 yards of goal, chips it forward, Pratt with the chest down, it falls on the far side to Mavadidi and he made a real hash of that and the flag stays down on this near side and Plymouth defenders look towards the assistant on this near side and here we're going to have a change for Leicester City Jamie Vardy is going to come on and Patson Dacca is the player who is coming off yeah I mean it wasn't a particularly good angle but that's a horrible finish and Faust comes over and gives him a little pat Patson Dacca because he's taking a little bit, little bit of stick and yeah probably overall that's probably the, the right decision from the, the coach to get him out the fire line especially when you've got the quality of, of Vardy and Cannon waiting in the wing so not Dakar's night again but oh, overall I saw some good things I saw some good movement it's just that finishing that is unable to recapture from early part of the season 37 year old Jamie Vardy is now on for Leicester City not played against Plymouth Argyle before at all and Plymouth have the ball on the right hand side Edwards sees his cross blocked, has to go back and Plymouth indeed will work it all the way back to Scar Gibson inside his own half left hand side Galloway Galloway left hand side wins a throw in Jamie Vardy with this appearance against Plymouth has now played against 71 different clubs and he scored against 47 of them nine goals in his last 12 appearances for Leicester made his 400th appearance for Leicester at Millwall in midweek Plymouth have it on the left hand side and they will have a throw in about 25 yards out from the goal line on this left hand side and Mumba will take his time indeed he won't actually take it it'll be left for Galloway Plymouth rather dangerously work it back Gibson will get there first and Gibson is eventually found. It is still Plymouth Argyle 1, Leicester City 0. The relegation strugglers leading the championship leaders, courtesy of Mustafa Bunder's goal after 22 minutes. Jamie Vardy has come on for Leicester City just a few moments ago, replacing Patson Daka up front. And Sam Parkin, it is an intriguing match here at Home Park. It really is, yeah. Leicester have had some chances early part of the second half. Argyle have responded made a defensive change at times they're back in a almost a back six asking Leicester really can you break us down they're probing and they're trying to prise them open the only change from Goreska so far is like for like Vardy on for Dakar so far Vardy not able to get into the game but it looks like it's just going to be back to the wall for our goal try and get over the line with this 1-0 yellow card for it Yannick Vestergaard the Leicester defender and Argyle have a free kick midway inside the Leicester City half it really is a match with huge ramifications at both ends of the championship table 
certainly Leeds and Ipswich fans will be hoping that Plymouth can win supporters of those teams down at the bottom of the table will be hoping for a Leicester comeback commentary continues on TalkSport 2 it's Plymouth 1 Leicester 0 free kick hit forward by Whittaker across to the far side and couldn't be turned across goal by Plegazuelo the Spanish defender who sprints back to the halfway line we're going to get a double change now for Plymouth Argyle Ryan Hardy is coming off and he'll be replaced up front by the New Zealand international Ben Wayne Ben Wayne very much used as a substitute for Argyle this season and also coming off Adam Forshaw and he will be replaced in the field by Jordan Horton and interestingly both the players that have been replaced were on yellow cards so Horton on in midfield Ben Wayne on up front Ben Wayne comes on for the 21st substitute appearance in the championship this season he's only made eight starts and he's been substituted off in all eight of those starts the ball deep into the Leicester half and it's kept in play by Wayne Wayne knocks it back now to Whittaker Whittaker inside the penalty here a left foot shot surrounded by three defenders it might have got a touch off one of them and the save is made by Hermanson but for a moment there that was really dangerous for Leicester at the back yeah just an impossibility for Ryan Hardy to continue in the same vein that he does he works so hard so Ben Wayne will have to bring that work rate first and foremost as he did there Gibson deep in his own half down by the goal line looking to squeeze that ball away and he's done so successfully Fars knocks it back into the penalty area Vardy can't get there Vardy looking to use all his guile and experience and find a way back for Leicester City in this match Ricardo square across to Justin central position now to Fars forward to Ricardo Winks, Winks advancing forward to the edge of the penalty area, lays it out to Dewsbury Hall. Infield now to Justin, Justin to Ricardo, Ricardo dinks it forward, looking for Kean and Dewsbury Hall. Dewsbury Hall with a little back heel, it was rather telegraphed, and Plymouth get it away. And it comes off out Fars, and it'll be a Plymouth Argyle throw. And just listen to the noise from the home supporters. I think that was a, a bit of an over-eager ball boy down there, just giving the ball back a little bit too quickly for Neil Dewsniff's liking, just telling him to calm down a little bit. There's a real electricity in the stadium, but still a long way to go. 20-plus minutes we've added on time. A long way to hold on. They need to have that calmness on the ball to get up the pitch and try and create something that will put the game to bed. 21 of Leicester's 79 goals this season have been scored in the final 15 minutes of a match. Having said that, 13 of the 38 that they've now conceded have also come in the last quarter of an hour. Plymouth Argyle 1, Leicester City 0. On Talk Sport 2, as Leicester work it out to Mavadivi, left-hand side, infield now to Justin. Justin just pauses, waits, puts his foot on top of the ball and plays it out to Mavadidi again, who shrugs off the challenge of Edwards. Infield now to Winks. Winks now to Ricardo. Ricardo to Fars, who has Fatou on this near side, but Fars goes forward himself, plays it across the penalty area. Mavadivi, right-footed shot. And he's got the shot away, but not really too much in the way of power behind it, and it was a relatively comfortable save for Michael Cooper in the Plymouth Argyle goal. Yeah, unquestionably they're going to be difficult to breach now because they're getting the two wide players in essence the right midfielder and the left midfielder Barley Mumber and, and Edwards have played so much football as, as wing backs they're really good defensively so they're getting back alongside that back four you've got four centre halves really across the, the back line now for our goal so really good physical size then the two outside midfielders are tucking around as well making that sick so there's going to be loads of bodies there for Leicester to try and bypass hence why the majority of the efforts since those changes coming from distance interception in midfield from Randall couldn't work it forward though to Whitaker. here's Vestergaard Justin knocks it forward Ricardo Ricardo Pereira inside the centre circle forward now to Dewsbury Hall Dewsbury Hall 
has to turn and lay it back and Leicester will look to build again Winks, right footed ball too ambitious and trying to find Fatou on this right hand side got far too much on the pass and it's harmlessly behind for a goal kick and the ball boy behind the goal on the far side does take his time this time learning from his mate yeah they'll be using all the tricks in the in the book now but they've given themselves the opportunity to do that got in the goal in the first half that was a, a rare straight pass from harry winks just has to go to fatawu's feet there we know he's got the ability the tricks to to skin his opposite number so you need to start asking questions try and get those full back center halves as i just spoke of in the box where they can't move their feet in comparison to mavadidi and Fatawu so stick to your, your principles it doesn't look like the manager is going to change keep moving it around and hope those two wide boys can have a say and listen to Plymouth against Leicester in the EFL Championship on Talk Sport 2 with McDonald's order McDelivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points 18 plus terms and conditions apply Plymouth 1 Leicester 0 we're into the last quarter of an hour now Mavadivi trying to work his way forward it's turned back by Plegazuelo to Cooper Cooper hits it away, right footed, deep into the Leicester half where Vestergaard meets it with a firm header downwards picked up though by Horton, Horton works it out to the far side Whitaker just cuts in field, midway inside the Leicester half the cross into the penalty area, cleared away by Ricardo. not too far, little header down we'll find Galloway and Galloway will turn it back to Cooper Cooper has time to play it across his penalty area to Dan Scar there were quite a few clad in green who wanted that ball hit firmly away from their own penalty area amongst the Plymouth supporters it's another sellout at home park every single home match this season a sellout following our girls promotion last season as champions of League One and they are determined not to return there Fars for Leicester works it forward now to Ricardo back to Fars Interception. Work forward now by Way. Cut out though by Ricardo. Ben Way, who was coached at Wellington Phoenix by a real favourite here, the New Zealand international Rory Fallon. Way tries to work it forward. Flag stays down now. Here comes Galloway for Plymouth. He's got an option in the middle. He lays it forward to Whitaker. Whitaker crosses it, and it was the wrong option. There was Joe Edwards clear in the penalty area, and he wasn't used. I don't think Galloway backed himself to be able to architect that delivery that it required. It was the wrong pass for Morgan Whitaker, taking him away from game, a goal it needed something pretty special from him on the turn really to reverse that towards Edwards. So a let off for Leicester certainly. All the time they are edging closer towards full time on Talksport 2. Vestergaard inside the centre circle now for Leicester City it's a wall of green in front of the Leicester players and they're looking to try and find a way past it but they won't do with that ball forward Fars chips it forward looking for Fatou and again it's too long and it's behind for a goal kick and Plymouth will take their time that's the Plymouth fans you can hear Plymouth who have away games at Stoke and Millwall followed by a home game against Hull on the final weekend of the season Stoke managed by the former manager here Stephen Schumacher that'll be a tasty encounter as far as the Argyle fans are concerned Leicester City with West Brom at home on Saturday the 20th Southampton at home Preston away on Monday the 29th and Blackburn Rovers at home on May the 4th as Chris Errington from Plymouth Live was saying earlier in his pre-match chat Plymouth such a long way from everywhere else in footballing terms particularly in the championship you've got to go up to Bristol City really for the local derby now with Exeter City down in League One it is difficult to get players to come down here the manager has to see it as a real opportunity and hopefully the next manager of Plymouth Argyle will see it as a real opportunity to build something here in England's most southwesterly club 
and they are leading Leicester City by one goal to nil Mustafa Bundu who's now off the field of play having been substituted with the goal after 22 minutes we're in the 80th minute Argyle work it forward that's offside and it was always going to be offside against Bali Mamba who was about a yard or so offside and the flag was quickly raised on the far side let's get the thoughts of Sam Parkin yeah, and the pattern of the game now naturally means that Leicester players are going to begin to tiptoe forward so that counter-attacking threat is very much evident and on for Argyle twice now Mumba just too eager to get in if anything stay in his half and then run from deep he'll be able to get in I'm certain of that in the remainder of this game as Leicester continue to, to push and press Leicester throw on this near side they're right and it's taken back to the halfway line to Fars infield now to Vestergaard inside the centre circle Vestergaard will work it out to his left to Justin Justin faced by Whitaker. forward to Dewsbury Hall Dewsbury Hall out to Mavadidi on the left hand side Mavadidi's cross it's too long and Cooper lets it roll and Cooper lets it roll behind and it's another goal kick to Plymouth Argyle Well, if you're a supporter of Ipswich Town or Leeds United, you'll be praying that this scoreline stays the same. But will it? We are in for a thrilling finale. 16,861 is the attendance at Home Park tonight. 1,789 here in the away section. The away section full, Home Park full, and they have witnessed a match that has been jam-packed, full of tension. Plymouth knock it forward long. Vestergaard returns it with a low header now to Winks. Inside the centre circle, crosses the halfway line now. Coming forward, still coming forward. Pratt, out wide to this right-hand side to Fatawu. Fatawu, faced by Galloway. Looking to play it into the middle to Ricardo. Ricardo, edge of the penalty area. Lays it back to Vestigar. Vestigar thought about a shot there perhaps for a moment from distance. Tries to lay it through to Vardy. Dewsbury Hall, edge of the penalty area. Forced left. Now cuts back in right. Goes down in the area. Well, he was looking for a penalty there. And, well, isn't that a yellow card? Well, there's no great appeal. I thought initially there was possibly a collision. But there isn't, he's anticipating it. The leg of Edwards, I think it was, on the cover actually went behind the Leicester City midfield player. Pegasuelo actually, isn't it? Getting back to his, his feet there from the initial collision, not a penalty. Definitely not a penalty. Important to keep an eye on the clock. 82 minutes played. Plymouth won. Leicester nil and Plymouth win it and won it well and Bally Mumba now comes out racing away down the left hand side Mumba into the middle Vestergaard will tidy up just outside his own penalty area and knocks it back to his goalkeeper but the chances will come for Plymouth Argyle on the breakaway yeah, and he's the one Mumba because he's got the athleticism from deep you know Edwards on the other opposite side isn't going to cover the distance as quickly as him Whitaker's more of a glider he hasn't got um, brilliant pace either so I think Mumba when the ball turns over they'll look to play it into the space for him Dennis Pratt back to Winks Winks out to this right hand side now to Fatuwu Fatuwu tries to go past Galloway Galloway sliding in comes off the chest of the Plymouth man it's behind for a corner yeah, it's that kind of scenario where the centre half's not going to want to run really he's not going to want to go to the byline not taken into the box so he committed himself uh, quite aggressively there Galloway gets away with it little bit rash but the ricochet just takes it behind for the corner corner then on this right hand side for Leicester City Dewsbury Hall takes it into the six yard area there's a Plymouth head on the end of it and it's behind for a corner kick on the other side now the Leicester left and across goes Staffy Mavadidi to take it Plymouth have everybody back Mads Hermanson the Leicester goalkeeper is virtually in the centre circle Mavadidi, right-footed, nonchalantly swings it into the middle. Vestergaard trying to get on the end of it. Referee's whistle is gone. And it will be a free kick for a foul inside the penalty area. And again, Plymouth will take their time. Well, it doesn't feel like the goal's going to come from a set piece. They look well stocked in there. Argyle, like I said, they've kind of got every kind of physical player statuesque player in their squad out there now trying to defend this lead four six foot plus 
defenders to start with across the back line. Remember Park Island beaten in their last two following the sacking of Ian Foster. They won at Rotherham last Friday night. They drew here with QPR 1-1 on Tuesday. Leicester knocked the ball forward. Vardy works it out to the left-hand side to Mavadidi. Mavadidi faced here by Plegozuelo. Mavadidi puts the cross in, comes off Plegozuelo, and it is another corner kick. This time on the Leicester left. They've taken it short. Dewsbury Hall, left corner of the penalty area. Hits it in, left-footed. Cooper struggling to get there, but he got there eventually and punched it away. Winks now outside the penalty area, lays it to his left. Ricardo back out to Winks, out to Fatou on this right hand side. Fatou forward to Pratt inside the penalty area. Cooper, does he take that ball cleanly? He does, and he prevents it going behind for a corner after it ballooned up off the defender. And the applause from the Plymouth Argyle supporters is huge. Plymouth have a player down, incidentally, now inside their penalty area. And see who it is, but it's certainly a bit a touch of cramp. It might well be Plegozuelo who is down. But Dan Scar is administering the help. 85 and a half minutes played. Plymouth Argyle 1, Leicester City 0 on Talk Sport 2, the home of the EFL. You referred to it as a green wall a few minutes ago, and it's absolutely that at the moment there's no way through for Leicester Dennis Pratt's made a few intelligent runs down this right hand side but Argyle able to get a foot on the ball deflect kindly into the hands of Michael Cooper and they survive again Winks hits it long down the left hand side Cooper comes out to the edge of his area to claim it ahead of Mavadidi and Cooper will just take his time in releasing it referee Rob Jones having a good long look at his watch Enzo Maresca out on the edge of his technical area Plymouth Argyle hits it away long but it's straight out of play on this near side and Wout Fars will take the throw stand up if you love Argyle is the chant so everybody does in front of us it would be huge for this football club to stay in the championship next season Plymouth like Leicester have had all sorts of financial woes over the years but now they're on a solid financial footing and looking for new investors and that search for new investors would be considerably enhanced if they were to remain a championship side 87 minutes played ball played long by Leicester Cooper thought about catching it then decided against it let it go behind for a goal kick and a few more seconds will elapse it just looked like they may be in business there Jewsbury Hall made a, a good intelligent run just trying to join up with Jamie Vardy had that been slightly undercooked possibly wouldn't be able to get there maybe with the first time finish but again too much on it goes to safety I think Vardy's had one touch yeah John, since agree. he come on the ball was played in he kept it alive on the far side for whatever reason it just can't seem to get him into these games at the moment very much like I saw on Tuesday board by Pratt looking for Vardy Cleared away though by Scar. Scar can't get there. Vardy into the penalty area. Can he get there? He can. Cooper makes the save. And it's a huge save from Michael Cooper. Bravely diving at the feet of Jamie Vardy inside his own penalty area. And the goalkeeper comes away with the ball. Brilliant goalkeeping. Yeah, exceptional. And there we go, right on cue. Not been in the game at all. And again, it's just a ball kind of just helped behind. Looked like Argyle defenders were favourites. But he's still got that change of pace, that speed off the mark. He gets there but Cooper is alive to the situation closes it down really quickly so Jamie Vardy can't elevate it over him Leicester work it wide Mavadidi cuts in field from the left hand side forward to Dewsbury Hall inside the penalty area wins a corner kick and is in a hurry to take it takes the ball off the plinth himself although there isn't one there and he has to chase the ball down himself as he's receiving no assistance whatsoever from the Argyle ball boys Everybody back for Plymouth Argyle. Virtually everybody forward now for Leicester City. Corner kick then. Dewsbury Hall will take it. Left footed. Outswinger towards the head of Vardy. Cleared as far as Winks. Winks low shot. Takes a deflection. And this will go behind for a goal kick. Just a moment or so there where everybody was wondering whether that was going to be a corner or a goal kick. 89 minutes played sorry important little touch from Jamie Vardy at the near post just created a little bit of 
panic amongst the Argyle ranks. Harry Winks with a snapshot, but good spot from the referee once more. Deflected off James Justin, his own man, and away a for a goal kick. Well, if it stays this way, can Ipswich and Leeds United take advantage tomorrow? Ipswich at home to Middlesbrough, Leeds at home to Blackburn Rovers. Of course, we'll kick you right across all the action in the AFL on TalkSport and TalkSport 2. We're about to go into additional time at the end of the 90 minutes. Still Plymouth 1, Leicester City 0. Mavadidi on the far side. The championship leaders staring a third successive away defeat in the face unless they can do something special in the time that remains. Worked out now to Fatawu, right-hand side. He's got away from Mumba, but Mumba comes back to challenge him. Leicester will clear. Not too far. We go into a minimum of five minutes additional time at the end of the 90 minutes. We're into those five minutes now. Fatawu tries to get away from Mumba. Mumba times his challenge brilliantly. Slides the ball out for a throw-in. Taken quickly by Ricardo. Pratt. Right-hand side now for Leicester. Left-footed ball in. It's a dangerous one as well. Cleared away by Edwards. And Plymouth still have plenty of defending to do. Mavadidi lays it back now to Vestergaard. Vestergaard trying to get away from Whitaker. Mavadidi, left-hand side. Vestergaard. Vestergaard back in now to Fars. Fars out to the right-hand side. It's a slightly misplaced ball. And the challenge comes in from Ben Wayne. And it's a yellow card for the Plymouth Argyle substitute as he went for the ball there against Harry Winks sliding in in a desperate attempt to get there he got there first he did but the follow through is quite nasty actually I mean we get the opportunity to see it again on the monitor his studs go straight into the, to the shin of Harry Winks and that is something in the game that's changed yeah. the last year or so hasn't it you just can't get away with that follow through connecting with an opponent free kick then for Leicester City just ahead of the centre circle just to the right hand side Winks will take it, floats it into the penalty area. And that comes off Plegozuelo to Leicester corner. Dewsbury Hall across to take it. We've played one minute and 40 seconds of the minimum of five additional. Dewsbury Hall with the corner across into the penalty area. Vestergaard got his head on it. Glides it wide. Goal kick. Huge relief amongst the home supporters. Massive frustration amongst the away fans. Some of whom are queuing to leave the stadium as soon as they possibly can. Yeah, I mean, from dead balls, they've defended their box absolutely brilliantly. Probably to be expected given the height, given the amount of defensive players that Neil Dewsnip has now got in his 11, but still loads of balls been slung in there, especially from corner kicks throughout the proceedings. Nargol getting so many of those first contacts on the ball. And Nargol will get a free kick. Fatamu stands, hands on hips, having conceded that free kick just inside the Plymouth half on the left hand side. And Plymouth will slowly work the ball forward to Adam Randall, named man of the match by the sponsors tonight. Although, if you were to choose a Plymouth man of the match, I think it'd be quite quite hard, actually. They've all played superbly. Gibson with the free kick, lofts it forward long, down the inside left channel, looking for Mumba, can't find him, behind for a goal kick. And Hermanson is in a hurry to take it. Takes it short to Vestergaard, who's still inside his own penalty area. 93 minutes and 12 seconds have been played. A minimum of five minutes additional on TalkSport 2. Plymouth Argyle 1, Leicester City, the championship leaders, nil. Justin works it out to Mavadidi on the far side. Mavadidi cuts in field onto his right boot, across the area, Vardy sliding in. Made a connection, couldn't though guide it on target. And Cooper ends up in the back of his net. And unfortunately for Leicester, it was only the goalkeeper and not the ball. Yeah, the ball just got transferred over to the left-hand side and probably for the first time in this second half, Mavadidi's got a nice little bit of room there. Edwards doesn't get to him. Vardy just slung out his left leg on the turf, sliding in towards Michael Cooper. Couldn't get anything on the ball. Collision between him and the goalkeeper, but that's probably 
the closest they've come actually Jamie Vardy couple of chances in quick succession other than that very little to talk of and to the last minute of the five minutes of additional time against Coventry here on Valentine's Day Plymouth Argyle were leading 2-1 with seconds remaining but conceded a late late goal to draw 2-2 those two drop points could be vital come the end of the season but if they can get all three here well they would move themselves away from the relegation zone with three to play last few seconds Mavadidi Pereira Ricardo Pereira chips it out to the far side four forward for Leicester as Dewsbury Hall tries to put a cross and he's done so it's half cleared away and whacked away to safety by Plymouth anywhere will do as far as those in green are concerned Justin knocks it forward Leicester last few seconds Ricardo the whistles coming from Plymouth mouths Works it out to this near side, Fatamu, Fatamu can't find a way through, the flag has gone up and the referee will blow for a Plymouth Argyle free kick and not full time. Neil Tuznip and Kevin Nanskeville down on the edge of their technical area, just pleading for a bit of calm from their players, slow things down. And this might well be the final action of the evening, all those in front of us are standing up so we have to stand as well. We are staying up, is the chant from the Argyle supporters. Well, not yet they're not. They have a free kick inside their own half. 95 minutes and 38 seconds have been played. Is this the last action of a pivotal night in the EFL Championship? Rob Jones blows his whistle and Plymouth Argyle have a huge three points and it is a massive defeat for the Championship leaders Leicester City three in a row away on the road they have lost by one goal to nil it is now all to play for at the top because the top three now all have four matches left to play Kevin Nanskeville down below the interim first coach just clutches his fist and there are huge cheers all around Leicester City have been beaten Plymouth Argyle with the goal from Mustafa Bundu after 22 minutes this was a result that was 6-1 to one with the bookies beforehand. Well, I wish I'd put some money on, because Plymouth Argyle have won it with some solid, obdurate defending, and Leicester could find no way through Sam Parkin. No, I think after a difficult opening, maybe 10, 15 minutes, Argyle's game plan, as Mills was on Tuesday against Leicester, very, very good again, and the changes from Neil Dewsnip, absolutely superb. Changing the shape, you know, being reliant that they could defend the box, that they could defend their own half as diligently as they did. Great confidence shown in them by the by the interim manager. And in the end, I think they got absolutely what they deserved. Another very, very subdued Leicester City performance. And you have to worry for them now and that really, really low confidence that seems to be evident within their group. Well, the confidence might be low for Leicester City, but for Plymouth Argyle, it is as high as you like. The new management team, the returning interim management team of Neil Jesnip and Kevin Nanskeville have inspired Argyle to two wins and one draw since the departure of Ian Foster. But this cue, a result that will be felt far and wide in the EFL Championship, and what a night it was at home park. Full time, Plymouth Argyle won, Leicester City nil. And I'm sure there are as many celebrating in Ipswich and Leeds as there are in Plymouth right now. It means that Leicester City stayed top on goal difference. They have played the same number of games as Ipswich and Leeds, 42. Ipswich level on points with Leicester. Leicester top on goal difference. Leeds just a point behind them. But maybe it's the mood now in terms of this title race, the psychology that has changed totally when it comes to squeaky bum time because Leicester City's form is heading totally in the wrong direction at the wrong time of the season. Massive for Plymouth. They move up to 16th in the table, five points clear of the drop zone and Sheffield Wednesday, albeit they have played a game more, but they will feel with so many teams beneath them that they are in a great position to stay in the division after their promotion last season. Sam, fantastic night there at Home Park, as we can hear. As um, John mentioned, seven points from nine since the sacking 
of Ian Foster. It is an entirely different team, an entirely different mood. With two massive away games now to come against Stoke and Millwall, they will feel like they can get the points they need to mathematically secure their position in the division before they welcome Hull on the final day. Oh, it's an enormous victory, colossal victory, incredible performance from them, especially in that second half. You know, I'm kind of scratching around trying to think of you know, presentable Leicester City opportunities, maybe the one for